<laughs> Greetings, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to an unsafe safe at any warp speed edition <laughs> of Monster Party. Monster Party! Monster Party! Monster Party! Where are my, where are my marshmallows? Where? Oh, there they are in that machine. Oh, well, before I get to my marshmallows, let me introduce myself. I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I am Larry Strofe. And I'm James Gonis. And for this episode, this should be really fun. Right, guys? Uh, yeah. Because, yes. Because yes. there's a lot I, to talk about. I've got questions. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is something that uh, I'm surprised we haven't done it before. I guess we've sort of touched on things. Yeah, a little bit. Lately. A little bit. But, Some uh, of the topics. But in any yeah. case, the topic for the show tonight is... Future fails. Future fails. Oh, oh no! no. What if, What's gonna go wrong? Everything. Oh, uh, science! <laughs> What's going on? Come Everything on! Everything is going to go wrong because well, that's what happens. Well, what what yeah. do you mean when you say future yeah, fails? Can I clarify. What, yes. Well, future fails would be something that we were promised that didn't come to pass in a science fiction movie, some sort of technology, for example, or a technology that is so stupid. And it's so ridiculous. And out that, there. That we really, we dodged a bullet that it didn't actually come to pass. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yet. 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 I mean, you never know. Right. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. That's true, James. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. And you know who I like to share a roller coaster with? Someone who's <laughs> failed. <laughs> wow. no, wait, wait, wait. no, I mean, I mean, I, no, no, I don't mean it that way. I mean, someone who knows about future failure. I mean, wow, wow, I mean, Mr. no, 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 no. I, I don't mean it like that. Unbelievable. I mean, you know, who, wow. who knows about? She's she knows about. Uh, There's no oh, getting shoot. out of this, Larry. There's no way. You can't do okay. it. So just who, let who, it go. Uh, who is our guest, Matt? <laughs> okay. Our guest is, oh, she's an old friend of ours, but maybe very not successful. for very long. No, no, she's very successful. She is very, very successful. Very successful. A very successful comedian, writer, director, producer. Oh, my God. She does it all, and we just love her completely. She's a winner. She's a winner. A winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is on my aspirational posters, you know, that get me up in the day and make me want to take on the world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Sue Murphy. Sue Murphy! <laughs> Sue! Thank you, Sue. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry, for that warm <laughs> introduction. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's a lot of times, a lot of times when people say, would you like to do something? You go, I don't know. But it, it's just it's so hard to turn down with the generosity uh, which has given me here at Monster Party. Oh, uh, you should write, you like, should just write intros, Larry. Excuse me, Matt, I'm talking to Larry. <gasps> <laughs> I think she's directing this to me. <laughs> no, get him. <laughs> but there's nothing to get. It's I am. Larry, I, yes, Larry, Larry yes. save yourself. <laughs> I'm thrilled to have you. We're all and thrilled. I, We're always oh, yeah. yes, <laughs> of course. Yes, um, and, and this is a fun topic. It's always it's gonna be a fun. Topic. Yeah, because, Sue, I'm sure you have. You've watched enough science fiction throughout your life. I'm sure that there are so many things that it's like you know a bee in your bonnet. There are these things, these technologies that just drive you crazy. Like why? Why was that considered a good thing? Or things that you know we like. Where is it? Come on, bring it on. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a, always there's something that you go, what, what, what's the point of that? Except for maybe it's a cool <coughs> looking shot. Yeah, but right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think a really, really obvious one is that see through interactive board that people are waving their oh, hands around. Always, yeah. Like in a like minority, minority, and report. minority report. Minority yeah. report. <laughs> and if you try to imagine, you're all day, you're doing that. I mean, it's you, your arms, you would have the, 
Well, it's the biggest <laughs> upper body workout just to get rid of your emails. You yeah. just be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. you'd be oh, Popeye. this or this. You just sit back down. Yeah, it, and it's what's the point when you can actually just do? Yeah, <laughs> or or like or by that time, like in the future, they would have it would be like voice commands. You just sit there and instead of you know do all that. I mean, there's got to be other easier ways. But I will say that where they got that kind of maybe wrong in that movie, what they did get right on the dot, I think, was the face scan technology for marketing. Oh, yeah. When you when you walk into a department store, oh, yeah. they start, you know, advertising things that are right. targeted towards your, they already do right. that. Like Amazon, you get emails all the time. You see ads in your yeah. email and your, that that's for real already. So yeah. that, that, that they got right on the nose. I know, but this is about fails, right, Larry? It is. It's about, <laughs> okay, it's about the fails, Sean. <laughs> but I'm just, wow. saying, I'm just saying, along with that fail, sometimes you get, Something that's around the house. Well, yeah, oh, look also, at you. A ray you know, of I mean, sunshine. We, and we didn't get from that movie. We also didn't get a tub full of people in water trying to see the future of time. But that's, <laughs> right, uh, right. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> believe me. Wait, can I? So, <laughs> so yeah, when's that going to happen? So right. Sue, is it they're 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 in a tub and they're like uh, so it's like I'm not supposed to feel I'm not I'm just I'm like in like, yeah, like altered states. states. I gotta is tell that, you, I mm-hmm. I can't explain how that works, Larry. I mean, I mean, Sue, don't you think it would work better if it's like just shoot them up with some, I don't know, not Novocaine, but, you know, it's like no, stuff Novocaine. that kind of makes you kind of all numb and you're like out of it. Ah, and you can just lie in a bed. I mean, I don't you, think that's you still want to do E.T. No, when, when no. you do, your, when you make your sounds, you <laughs> so you, it's, it's almost it's so close to ET. Like, uh, it's so I, close. that's pretty good. I don't know how ET <laughs> got into this conversation. Do you notice that Sue? Some people just really try to like cram ET into the conversation when I it had nothing. I to have do. no idea what you're talking about. So the thing is, the screens, the screens, those things, and they did it in Avatar too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. The wait, wait. Weird, with the little weird screens that basically you're just flailing your arms around. It's like that. It's and like that, that, Wii, that like, game. It's like oh, and it's almost like you're baking. It's like okay, here's a little flour, and then I'm gonna pour this <laughs> yeah. over here. Yeah. Oh, we better bring this up and better do this. And it's, it, I, I just think it's absurd. Wait, can I ask you a stupid question? I mean, you've used the theremin before, right? You know how when you do the theremin and you get your hands really close by and it goes, you have to be so specific with your hand movement or to point to things. And don't you think like when Tom Cruise and those guys, when they were doing their minority report thing, how often would they go try to push them and go, oh, damn it, not that thing. And then, you know, you try All to move time. your finger. And yeah. I mean, yeah, you really have to get ad- adept at that. You know, yeah. like it, that's I mean, it'll be a whole new skill level. And but what if like, like, what if you're handicapped? That's though? just how cool Tom Cruise is. He's the best. True. He's the best. <laughs> that's right. He, he you knows know, how to it's Just like any air. Steven Seagal movie. It's like, oh, I wish Casey Ryback was on that boat. He is on the <laughs> boat. He's the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a good one, Sue. That That's a, a good, good one, fail. though. One of my favorite fails, and this is, I think, might piss you guys off a little bit because I know that it's something that you like, and that is giant robots. Giant oh. robots. Giant robots <clears throat> is a fail. Now, yeah. as, as a thing in a movie to watch a giant monster fight, a giant robot, that's cool. We know we all like that, but in reality, it's the dumbest idea ever. Yeah. Because yeah. why would you why would you make this giant thing? Like you see a giant monster, and then it, <clears throat> your idea is like, oh, well, I'll make something that is almost the exact same thing as that giant monster, but mechanical, instead of just having a tiny little robot that flies into Godzilla's mouth and gives him right. a virus <laughs> and, right, it's, right. and it's done, you know? If you right. have if you have the technological capability to build one of those giant robots then you can do a lot more damage in other ways than one of those giant robots. Exactly. Well, yeah. it's also it's also the things that people have said about like Ant-Man. They go, why doesn't he just fly up Theros's ass and then- <laughs> Right, yes. And yes. Right, yes. right, right. Implode yeah. him from inside, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. closest thing to giant robots, Matt, like you guys would say, like they have those for, for entertainment, like in the robot restaurant in Japan, they have these like, you know, yeah. 15 foot, 20 foot robot. And there's like these companies that make these giant, I mean, they're, they're like pretty big robots, but it's just like, 
for sports and for like entertainment. It's not like, you no, know, yeah, I wouldn't hire him for security. But yeah. Matt, maybe you're right. you're talking about like Pacific Rim size, like a really yeah. big robot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's funny because it makes me think. You know, if a robot showed up in the, in in like 1976, all we had was Carlo Rambaldi's giant King Kong mechanical robot, which really didn't work very well. Right, right. It's, so it was basically right. a giant structural. It, it it has to do with the weight and the energy and the just the yes. pulleys and the system. You know, we have hydraulics now. We have all kinds of different things. But but you're right, Matt. I mean, it just, just seems balance like, alone. But you know? but but it's it's cool to watch. Yeah, like, that's exactly. Yeah, that, that's but all. Then, that's what it is. The other thing too is that with a giant robot to be used as a weapon to fight a giant monster. You've also got the problem of anytime that robot steps on something or falls into something, it's just more collateral damage. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just a fail from top to bottom. Like, yep. yeah, just I get agree. a make a tiny <clears throat> robot that can fly into his ear or whatever. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're done. So- also, where are they fabricating these giant robots where people don't? <laughs> yeah, know yeah, like these humongous it's factories like, that are making. The, <laughs> well, you know, the, it's like well, you know, it's with the satellite imagery, and it's like, oh, and if you built it in a big cave, then as soon as you build it, it's like, oh shit, we can't get it out of here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> but, but look, the one good so thing, where- Matt. The one good thing you could say is like it would be putting America back to work, though, because you need all those people <laughs> yes, working true. on yes. the giant robots. Just for the jobs, yeah. you, know, you know, just for the jobs. <laughs> right. <laughs> what about, and that, I think also one of the most popular, you know, ideas in sci-fi is because it's a cool idea, obviously, with Star Trek. But also another example is is matter transmission, you know, the, the hmm. transporter, transporter but even yeah. like the, the fly or right. even movies like The Projected Man. It's also kind of a, a fly type thing where you're you're projecting your your or Willy Wonka. You know, yeah, uh, you're yeah. projecting yourself in, in in the air and and appear somewhere else. But that idea is so fascinating and cool in a sci-fi way. But you know, we're not there with that technology yet. And what's funny though is I always saw thought about Logan's Run because in Logan's Run you have the thing called the circuit the circuit right which is basically also a transporter yeah it's like basic and what's it, so in, in it's the like, it's city, like tinder meets a transporter well, that's what's funny is that this is the future where there's no war and anything so we have this amazing technology to literally transfer people from one place to another and it's just for sex parties of course <laughs> you know it's just it's like <laughs> yeah, it's like a listen. it's like a dating app with like matter yes. transmission right. which is insane <laughs> yeah the transporter was discovered while they were trying to invent Viagra. So many things. We <laughs> <laughs> never know like, what they're like, across. We stumbled on penicillin. We stumbled yeah. on this. Yeah. Somehow yeah. Like, they... and this is a miracle drug. It's like, yes, but will it give me a boner? Well, keep working, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Here's, here, also, here, you know those are the prior- priorities. The only thing. Yeah. Be- <laughs> also, also with Logan's Run, I have yet to see how the, they would practically use the love shop <laughs> well, with all, with well, that, all, that one i can explain no but all, with all <laughs> with all the sexual transmission transmitting diseases oh, and like got, uh, but so are those wait. people are those people no, in the love shop just like they, like, they just lay around I, waiting for people to come in like, well sean if i could say if i could go out on a limb here i think in that future you know, they just give you a, a, you know, it's like a couple COVID shots or something. And it's like, <laughs> hey, we, it's all the diseases, you know, we've taken care of, you know, with a couple of these just shots. It just seems we, very unsanitary. Logan well, Fudd says, get vaccinated. Well, <laughs> yeah. it, it is a nice, it's a nice, because it's for a sex, Tinder, whatever, transporter. But they couldn't <laughs> invent zippers. If you remember the outfits. <gasps> Uh, You're right, run. Sue. It, it was right. Just like, no zippers. Well, I'm just saying the amount of money that get poured out the production, and they probably they got to wardrobe and went, oh, yeah, we are <laughs> so broke. <laughs> yeah, it's a, lo- a lot of dance skin. No, no, you know, Sue, a lot of- <laughs> I, no, Sue. I think it was the other way around. I thought it was the director going, wow. You can't have a zipper. This is the future. They don't have zippers in the future. They yeah. were outlawed. And then like pocket pockets. What, what people need mm. keys? No, no, you don't have pockets. You don't have zippers. And that's, you know, pockets you're, are so it, yesterday. That's the yeah. funny thing, Sue. They're always trying to, you know, hey, fix the clothing to make it seem like the future. But when it came to the hair, 
But the hair is okay in the 70s style, you know? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Do yes, it is. That's like a, like a Star Trek, the motion picture. The uh, the outfit designs, the, the wardrobe design in that movie, there's also like no pockets and those things. Yes. And they they oh. look ill-fitting and then like the, yes. the shirts are too short and they're just, just, just all weird. Hey, but wait but, a minute. But, yeah, but, the, but speaking of which, and getting back to the transporter, you know, in that movie, there's a transporter accident. True. Right? Yes. It kind of starts right. the movie. Yes. And, so, yes. and that's my thing with transporters is that it's it's it sounds like such a great idea. It right? is a great idea. But but the minute it goes wrong and you know, it's going to go like in yeah. real life, things go wrong all the time. How many yeah, times that, you got to yeah. restart your computer? You yeah, know, what if there's a power surge? Right. Oh, and, and science fiction, it's, it's the whole point that something goes wrong. Like yeah. the Always. Well, that's, why, that's why, that's why McCoy, you... McCoy is hated getting into the transporter. He's worried about being that's transported right. inside a rock. You know? well, also, yeah. also, how do you think we always get to the parallel universe? It's a mistake that all of a sudden, right? right. Yes, right. that's right. Okay, yeah. okay. You know, guys, ion, it's an ion storm or again, something. Again, I'm going to go out on. It's always an always an ion storm. No, I'm going to go out on. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think the future science fiction. The, the reason why we have all of these things and oh, things go wrong because that's called drama. You gotta have to have drama to have, make you watch. Thank I you, think Larry. the future, the future. <laughs> I imagine in Star Trek, you know, normally it's a very very boring, dull day. You know, everything, hey, the holodecks where everything's working, you know, everything's, up, you know, up to code. You <laughs> this, know, the battery. Right, up to code. This is from the man who didn't want the people in the tub in a uh, thing. He wanted <laughs> just to put Novocaine and put him in bed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I don't want the minority report that because, you know, it's called drama. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Storytelling. It goes, it goes back to, to mythic. Storytelling. How yes. about how about some other fails? With like- yes. Hey, James, what do you got? Well, well, it's the nature. I mean, the nature of science fiction is it's all cautionary. It's like, ooh, well, we can do this, but maybe right. we have to be face the consequences. Time travel. This yeah, full of right. Of course, any any time travel story is going to be all about like, oh, the butterfly effect. Right, right. You no, know, yeah. changing the alternate past timeline. And there's theories about going like you could go in the future, maybe, but not the past. You know, like which is more possible theoretically. You know, I mean, yeah, right. it's it's mind bending. I mean, but yeah, it's something that you know. So every every single time travel story has come with that baggage. Every yeah. single one of them. It's just like yeah. it comes to the territory. Yeah, and that's it's why I think like it's a parable in in the way that that, that somehow st- um, science fiction writers are trying to teach us not to time travel as if we could. <laughs> right, right. You don't want to go there. Here's another <laughs> cautionary tale. You people were working on time travel. Here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just don't even go there. Stop working on that and get working on the boner medication. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And this is why that was originally what they called it. Viagra, by the way, the boner medication. <laughs> <laughs> which, which I, you know, and then all these technologies to like keep your. Penis hard. I got a <laughs> penis pump that just came out from uh, Remco or whatever. Wait, you and you I, have one, and I'm and I got this penis pump, and then boom, I'm suddenly in the past. Like that's yeah. how it's gonna happen. <laughs> suddenly, yeah. how, suddenly, you never know, right? It uh, you know, isn't it true though? The the Viagra pill was created quite by accident. It wasn't. It wasn't supposed to do what it was supposed to do and they're all hey look at this I didn't, yeah i didn't take it <laughs> yeah it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, look, i was trying, to, I was trying right. to dye easter eggs <laughs> right. yeah, I, well i mean the only that's a future fail for women in her, their 70s so um, oh, really it, you know i mean it's like oh all of a sudden grandpa oh god we thought, <laughs> yeah yeah <you're- laughs> <laughs> you thought you were over. You thought you were safe. Oh, now. Jesus. Oh, no. I'm 79. I'm just getting over a hip replacement. Here you <laughs> come with your ancient boner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, right, so Viagra and story. time travel. <laughs> okay. All right. But time travel. Time travel is one of those things, too. It's like, of course, it's a fail because every time you time travel, you're going to fuck something up. I mean, it's what just, if you do like yeah. a little short time travel, just a little one? I mean, yeah. if in, in real, and if you really think about like in hardcore theory of how it would work, if you're just disrupting the dust particles from the past, right. can't right. They, exactly. I mean, literally, literally, if you if you suddenly appear in the past, yes, you're fucking something up. Yeah, you you're know, taking a, up a, space. A, a, a moth that's flying one way, you suddenly appear, it flies the other way. Like, how about bacteria from the yeah. future? Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, that's- <gasps> even even if you could go, even if you could go back in time and save John F. Kennedy, like in uh, eleven from himself six, sixty three. Well, the uh, the Stephen King uh, thing, uh, where this character time travels back and he's able to, and this is a spoiler, so you know, uh, he's able to thwart Lee Harvey Oswald. And that still fucks everything up because everything right. goes right. to of hell. Course. Of course, yeah. Right. Um, and that's also going with the assumption that Lee Harvey Walswald actually shot him. <laughs> oh, oh, here no, we I'm go. sorry. Here oh, we I'm go. I'm sorry. Here, here comes the controversy. True. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Oliver Stone version. No, but I, right, I can't right. think of a time travel movie that actually like it's has fine. uses yeah. time travel and it's a happy ending. No, you know, it's, no, it's, it's always, always a something that gets right, fucked right. up. Yeah. Right. Time, time after time. That's okay. happy. Well, yeah. okay, that could be the exception. Well, by after after several deaths and murders, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah then it's happy yeah. compared yeah, right. to what? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, look. Okay. That I don't know about that being failed, but here's one. Here's okay. one that I think is a fail. Okay. So let's go back in our time machine to 1930, <laughs> and there was a film that came out called. Just imagine, and this is like pre-code right. Hollywood, yeah. okay? Right. And there's a it it tells a story for, about the future, what the future would be like. And there's a sequence where these guys are looking at some a couple, and they actually say, "Hey, honey, we've been married a year. Don't you think it's time that we have a baby?" Why, yes, dear, we should. And they go to a machine. And press a couple buttons. Oh, do you want a boy or a girl? And the girl and the woman goes, I want a boy. And they press a couple buttons and out comes this baby in a basket. And and I'm like, what the fuck? So so here's the thing that gets me about this. So okay, so what you have is to do this, you have a bunch of babies in baskets in the back, okay? Now, what happens is, oh, you know what? This this baby's been here for about a week, so uh, no one's taking it. So I guess we got to throw it in the in the grill, or you know, throw it in the, the grill. grill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and think about don't think waste about anything. The, well, think about the few seats. So, so many green is babies. And <laughs> speaking of which, no, speaking of which, we are now in 2022. Which is when Sonic Green is supposed to happen. Oh my god! Wow. And, wow. and that movie. The funny thing is, there's so many funky things about that film that they didn't get right. But the one thing they did, I mean, although it was extreme, is the whole weather change. You know how the yeah. planet is yeah. hotter, yeah. Yeah. global and warming. I, yeah. yeah, but but you know, it kind of made me think about these babies who aren't picked. Up. You know, it's like if you go to the pound, I'm going to get a puppy. Okay. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. oh, go on, a puppy instead of a baby. <laughs> well, it's like wow. No, right? It's like okay. I only want to get. What is the future fail here? A baby making. Yes, machine. no, machine. no. The, the, because it's yeah. not it's making it's, a baby. The baby is there. What do you think, Sue? Oh, let's add water to this, and a baby grows out of it. Well, no, maybe they're growing from embryos. Maybe they're like, you know. Sean, okay, Sean. And what happens? What happens when? Okay, but the baby is past its expiration date, or it's like, look, the baby's now a toddler. You know, it's like we only deal in babies. So well, they take the baby, they throw them in like a like well, a, wait a, like a, a, a wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't know the background to that though. Yeah, right? I need to know. How it works? The yeah, machine. maybe when you, also, once you press the button, then it actually forms. Maybe it's just like a yes. an egg, and then this technology of, of the machine, you press it and whoosh, little baby yeah, yeah, wait, speeds you're it you're up. Thinking, you're thinking like it's Costco. There's just some in the back. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> a pack of fifteen. How the guy comes out in the forklift and feeds the machine and does <laughs> right, right. So I'm that is saying correct. You come in, you put the new babies in the machine, you take ones out, you chuck them like old sandwiches. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, yes. Pass past due milk, but. but Yes, but Sue, because we don't want to waste all those babies, so they throw them in like like a chopper or something that makes them into like mincemeat or something for you know <laughs> right? to for make what? it the soil wow. like green or something like. <clears throat> because in the future, well, well, you can't look, guys. We can't we can't be well, so wasteful in the future. You know, we have to. So use that's your problem our- with the babies <laughs> being. <laughs> Put in, just, in I'm mincers. Just confused. I'm confused about the baby. See, Larry, Larry, I thought the fail was that that's how you make a baby in the future, and that's the fail because it takes the fun out of it, right? That's well, what I thought. That the well, that is, <laughs> that is true because the, the Dave, old guy that's for putting a button on it. That's yes. exactly. Yes, you did. It wasn't yes. any point that Larry was making. <laughs> no, but that's a good one. Yeah, it yeah. is, Chase, because yeah. the old the old guy who's watching the people press the button, he goes, ah. Oh, Give me the old days, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, right, right. and he's yeah. there with his huge erection. It's a weird <laughs> yeah. from the Viagra. Yeah, I, 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 and it's completely useless. 
I'm if you're saying it's just it's so surprising. 1939. It turns out the censors were even more lax than they are today. This guy yeah, yeah. If was that, was that, if, yeah, that wasn't was that that was yeah. pre code. Yeah, that was, was this was yeah, pre-code. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it yeah. was okay. <laughs> but it, but right. if you're just tuning in, our episode oh, is brought shit. to you by Viagra tonight. <laughs> yeah. So hey, but I I just think it's funny though that out of that movie and seeing that scene with the babies, that <laughs> the problem that you had was the waste part. Which isn't even really discussed in the movie. Right, right. right. It, it just a machine produces a baby, but you're like, yeah, but there's got to be 50 babies in that machine. What are they doing? Yeah. Well, see, where, 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 don't you think about stuff like that? Don't you look at this and what say, if, also, like, what, what if, happened to what all if those like, babies? Uh, what if, Blair, what if, like, in a vending machine, one baby is coming out and it gets stuck and it it's won't stuck, fall out? Right. And, you know, like that, it bogs up the whole system. Yeah. <laughs> you keep pressing the button and then the little, yeah. little, Clog was in there. Just, and I, and I'll, bet, I'll bet future Fonzie could come up to the side of it and just hit that's it. Right. And then that's get right. Hit it. I think that's all on the DVD extras. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, okay. All right. Uh, that was right. lovely. Here, here's a uh, here's one also that's very popular trope in sci-fi, and it's and it's cool. And a lot of great movies use it, like Alien, two thousand one, Planet of the Apes, Interstellar, and that's cryogenic sleep. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's, yeah, that's a very and that's a great concept and a great idea. But that's yeah. you know we're n- we're nowhere there with that yet. And you know who wants to volunteer for that? I think <laughs> you know? Michael Jackson was volunteering for that for a mm. while. Maybe. Yeah. Walt Disney, right? Yeah. Well, well, Walt Disney, no, right? No, no, no. <laughs> was no, Walt Disney? Okay. Well, no. edit it out. <laughs> no propofol jokes here. Not yeah, <laughs> wait, no, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. Mean, like, here, Sean, here's the funny thing I got to ask ask you so it's like so with the cryogenics what they're saying is hey you know we don't have the technology yet so we'll just freeze you and when we yeah, have or, that or technology slow down your kind of metabolic you know right your, right yes yeah. like, slow wait, down so your either metabolism. freeze it completely or totally slow down your heart rate whatever depending on the length of the trip that you're on in the ship yeah. you know oh, oh so you're, you're alive the ship. but you're like oh. barely alive oh okay yeah, but either way it's like to be then you know but you're also you're in stasis and aging. Your your cellular structure remains identical to when you went into that space. Right. So that's the thing. I mean, you right. can freeze somebody, but you can't reanimate them. Right. <clears throat> right. Yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the bugger. The thing yeah. that I don't like is it's I don't want it to be too cold. I mean, can they can oh, they you'll be on. asleep? Come you'll be, on. You'll be you'll unconscious. Be yeah. You won't know. <laughs> yeah, you're not just sitting there awake <laughs> for two thousand years. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think that the Buck Rogers was sitting there just for the entire time, just going. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah. Two thousand years, you're like, gosh, I should have put on chapstick. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Always oh, bring really? a coat. <laughs> oh, yeah. It can go wrong. Look at uh, what Stewart from Planet of the Apes. Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's, that's the, right. That, that's one of the few examples where you see it go wrong in such a ghastly that's way. Right. You know? That's true. It's like. Which is um, really cool. Um, uh, what's the other Tom Cruise one? Uh, where there, he's they're sucking all the water off the planet. Oh yeah, uh, Elysium or uh, El- it, it, no, it's not Elysium. It's Oblivion. 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 Yeah. Oblivion. Oblivion. Don't, Elysium. Don't they go south there too, or do they get sabotaged or something? Mm, I can't remember. I can't remember. Well, but... I can't remember what the problem was on that one, except the script and the acting and the director. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I just felt like there weren't enough babies. I know. Where's the baby machine? Right. This isn't the future. Uh, right. yeah. Hey, I've you got, know, I've got one here. I got another. Okay, go. Friend. Okay. Yeah. Flying cars. I was yeah. just about yeah. to bring yes. that up. Yes. That, that up. is on my and list, I was, Sue. I was thinking about the fifth element. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There's, no, there's no rules. There's no yeah. rules. People are going right. because I mean, well, so many, people are dying endlessly in yeah. car accidents today. I, I always, right. yeah, you're right. It would I never always work. Thought, now, it would never I work. Put it on and make it three dimensional. Yeah, it's like it's like a, it's like a traffic jam of flying cars. That's that's why I thought of all the flying cars so far depicted in movies. I always thought Blade Runner was the most believable because I I always thought it seemed like it was. I might be wrong, but it seemed like it was only police and authorities that could have yes. flying cars. Yeah, yeah. and they were they, they're not. So it wasn't like a huge traffic like they, no. they were. I bought that more in that movie that there could yeah. be those things, but and they weren't not, speeding; they were hovering. Yeah, it exactly. Makes more they're sense not, realistically, yeah. right? But they, right. yeah, I mean that because whole it would situation. be about magnetics. Yes. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it would just yeah. totally go wrong. I mean, there's no way that that can work. But first of all, speaking of flying cars, right? 
the idea of a flying car, we go with it because, oh, there's got to be some sort of like anti-gravitation, right. you know, right. generator that makes this thing fly or whatever. But this is the one that really bothers me. It's in a little film called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Oh, oh it's such a great film. Now, da, you look da, at that da, flying da, car da, 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 da. And, you, yeah. and you just go, there's no way that thing is taken off. I don't care what. Oh, you I would tell say me. though, my, it's got would, two little propellers and these tiny wings. And how dare you? How dare sure you? Matt, though, there's a little propeller in the back. No, but no, Matt, no, no. I would a, say, Matt, in, in defense of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, that's the only time you'll hear me saying that, is that <laughs> that movie is not science fiction, it's fantasy. Yeah, uh, and also, so, that uh, is so an invention I that is made by someone. That well, is, yeah, no, no, but that it's. Is, but, that is an invention that is made by someone. It is not that, magic. If you had stuck around until the end, you would have seen that the whole thing was a dream. Oh, thanks, Spoiler James. alert. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. <laughs> now the people are going to go, oh, I wanted to see the movie, but now James wrecked it for me. I know. Thanks, it's James. It's a 60-year-old movie. Uh, All right, well, that, it, it, that's it, it that one, a, John. It's a shitty, shitty movie. So, oh, 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 well, I mean, if we're going to talk about Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, then we should talk about Flubber, the invention of Flubber. Yes. Where yeah, Flubber. They, they, could they, that allowed things to fly and, you know, people to jump the, the, the basketball yeah, team. Yeah. You know, where's Flubber? Well, yeah, Flubber, I, the idea of a, a substance, a goo, that every time that you bounce it, it increases its momentum or energy each right. time it bounces the idea of someone actually coming up with that is pretty slight but but well in a well, movie it's, someone it's, explaining that to me i would be easier to go with that than say the two propellers on the shitty car well yeah i think that's actually more uh realistic than a lot of these other things you know just coming yes. up with a rubbery substance that can bounce and gain momentum yeah yeah well, but did how, you guys but, want it this, i just want super to use the word ball <laughs> well, guys, the Super Ball. Remember the Super Ball from the 70s? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the vending machines. Did, uh, Sue, yeah. didn't you have a Super Ball? Yeah, but the Super Ball stopped bouncing after a while. Did it really? <laughs> that is, oh, that oh is, no, is, I see what you're saying. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. not Flubber. Yeah. That is true. Right, right, right. It's true. But I, I, there, there's something about those balls, though. I mean, man. Uh, I mean, they're you so could, fun, you man. You could get those things to go I know. High. They're like rockets. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. We yeah. should make cars out of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should make Bouncing babies cars. out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Flubber babies. I like it. <laughs> All right. Here's well, the no, no. Can I, can I, Matt, can I just, just, just chime sure, into your in. flying car? The thing that you, you're, you're talking about, okay, you want to rip into Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Okay. I get it. I'll mm -hmm. let you have that. But, okay. but it's like the thing Thank about you. the flying car is, let's say in the world of science fiction, though. So it's like, I, I remember hearing, a car executive, first of all, saying, look, we can give you the flying car. But the truth is, it would be so expensive that no one would be able to afford it. Right. And then you think, mm -hmm. okay, so let's say you you buy or make the flying car economical so everyone can buy one. And then you go up in the air and you're able to you're able to float and you're able to move forward. The problem is, is that stopping, True. stopping. And, you have yeah. to land and like a plane. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and so that in itself, I mean, you could say, well, we have little sensors on the sides, and you know, like like how we have these. Hey, these are the uh, the driverless cars, the cars that can drive by themselves. Hey, and, and it, maybe it'll be similar to that. But well, it, it if, is if a the, problem. Sorry, Larry, if there are more like drones, you know, which can just sort of hover and stop. Yeah. And I think that's Maybe. more realistic. And, and that might be more the future of the actual, you know, being then, able to get up there and fly. More drone than car. Okay. Yes. I, just okay. Think, I think we're missing the, the fail on it, which is the human element. Mm. Yes. It's, yes. It's yeah. Yes, element. Sue. Yes. Like, okay, we could hover. We could maybe do this. But you can imagine the road rage of the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. my Where gosh. You're just, are, are you kidding me? And then you just hover over someone the entire time. Keep yes. cutting. Yeah. Uh, no. yeah. You know, then so you, you, their sunroof. You are absolutely right. Yes. No, no. It's, it's funny. I mean, how often do I mean, I, I've told my wife this. It's like sometimes when people – cut you off it's like don't don't flip them off you, you don't know how nutty those, some of those no. people are oh, or yeah. someone's carrying it very angry 
Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, let's just let's just say let's just say that you know, I, if if someone cuts me off or something, I just I just try to give them their space because you see, you're right. There are a lot of nutty people out there who are driving, and if we were to bring that into the air, you're right. If someone gets pissed off and so they go, oh, I'll show you, yeah. you're absolutely right, Sue. Absolutely. Can, can, can I can I build on this concept a little bit because Please. we're talking Please. about flying cars now. How about a flying boat, specifically a helicarrier in the Avengers? Yeah, I mean, that's so. Now, yeah. That is, to me, that's a fail because. No, I, it's reasonable. I, well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I understand if the helicarriers were usually in the water and then right. maybe because right. of an emergency or whatever, they could hover up and go someplace else. Yeah, but sure. In right. those movies, most of the time, they're just in the air. Yeah, and if yeah. it seems like goes, a really bad idea. It's just risky, like if, if the slightest, if, or if it's sabotage. Like you can't. And like the a, energy, like where are they getting all yeah. this fuel to keep this yeah. fucking thing up in the air? There because is. it's not anti grav. It's more like you know, they, I mean, yeah, it's more yes. like practical. It's like right, yeah, it's like it, helicopter technology seems yes, like, but you know. sophisticated helicopter technology. Yeah, yeah, well, it's Stark technology. So of course, it's like <laughs> you right. can do anything, but. Yeah. As if Terry Gilliam was designing the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, well, spe- speaking of, I mean, I, I know I've said this before, but you know, speaking of Stark technology, like the early Iron Man films, I love because the Iron Man suit is so cool and physical and practical and real. But yes. as it gets, I, as it as um, Stark advances with the technology, he, became, he, he starts using the, the nanotechnology where it's like literally he has a little watch on yeah. and he presses the watch and an entire suit forms around him. Yeah. That's yeah. like magic. That's not science. Yeah. Like, well, and, and then he, he presses a button and 30 other Iron Men show up. Well, but that, but that yeah, I can buy that, it. But no, but that if they're in the they're in his headquarters and he can, you know, contact them through his, that's, I, I buy that because they're physically there. But I'm talking about the matter just kind appearing of, on kind of nowhere. Like yeah, it's, it's right. cool. Yeah. It's cool looking. It, like yes. they, they kept they kept advancing it like and I think in the second movie it was a suitcase yeah, that, yeah. and that was like okay maybe but now that I think the later ones it's like it's just like a little watch and it becomes his entire suit how does that work like that's just it's just too much hey by the way Tony Stark later from what I just read upgraded the helicarrier so now they used repulsor technology oh, okay rather than oh. the turbine then it, then it's so it's completely least, believable so now i can totally <laughs> believe it but you know yeah. what on top of that then okay we've got the helicarrier and all that jumping off that any city that's in the sky well sure city in the clouds oh, city in the clouds cloud, cloud, cloud city which is a uh, great city. episode great yeah. episode yeah. Oh, another yes yeah beautiful and then, yeah, yeah it's, Flash so, it's such a cool Same idea thing. It's such but, a cool but, idea, but, but yeah. Terrible. Like, of course, something's going to go wrong. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, Somebody, I mean, you know, they you, they spit out their chewing gum and it goes into the <laughs> fluid that keeps the thing up in the air. And right, Don't right. you think, Matt, they Everyone's would have dead. like a, a little net, like a little net around the perimeter <laughs> That's of it? That's a good it, idea. Just, you know, just have, really. Yeah. No, they would a have series fl- of mattresses. No, they have flubber at the bottom. And it is <laughs> you bounce back up. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way I feel when I look at that tennis court built on top of a building in Dubai. Right. Just, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Wow. See, that's it. Yeah. You just, no. You just yeah. look at it because someone's going to go, oh, my God, it's an overhead. You just. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wait, Sue, can I ask a silly question? Well, what happens? Like, I'm not a great tennis player. I mean, what happens if I oh, really? hit the ball? <laughs> yeah. I hit the ball I and it goes. The thing of you is out there on the court. Well, I, I used to play tennis, you know, back in the day, but I'm not a great or anything. But but if I hit it and it goes up and goes like over the fence, where does it go? Does it go down like what? 70 I stories just, or just seen the photographs yeah, it, and it, nails, <laughs> it nails somebody in the head. Well, yeah, like a bullet. <laughs> the surface. Yeah. Would a tennis ball really hit someone like a bullet, Matt? Well, if it's it, high, it, it would hurt in the clouds. It would, let, yeah. <laughs> It would at least hurt like fuck or probably break <laughs> a rib or something. Right, a penny right. would probably kill you. Yeah. More than it would. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, in terms of flying cars, the more primitive version that seemed to be sort of the thing of the future back in the 60s was the jetpack. Like yeah, that's on my right. list. Yeah. That's on my list. That's and a like, good one. The jet pack? And that's here's, a good speaking one. Speaking of jetpacks, the jetpack that I always thought was not practical, even though it looks cool, was in the Rocketeer. Yes, because mm. the rocketeer, <laughs> he's, really cool. he's flying. He's flying horizontally. 
Right. But like, but like the fire is coming out of the jetpack right over his ass. Of, like, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah. like he's going to be burned burn to a crisp in a second. Like, well, like, he, he had leather pants on though. They were like leather. Stop. Yeah, I mean, I mean with like he had a on, he had like metal like, plate or something. No, no. Well, leather was, pants were a future fail too. But that's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jetpacks exist. I know, but that kind yeah. of jetpack, the, the that, kind yes. where you're going more vertically up and you're floating. Yeah, those, but but not the. Rocketeer kind of, I don't, or it's, king, I don't king of the rocket men, you know. Yeah, Commando it's Cody. practical. Right, right. Yeah. It's well, well, no, it's control. flying fails. What about flying bicycles? <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay now okay look look now, and we're back. i could i could only think of one movie one movie that has a flying bicycles and the flying bicycle wasn't using any kind of he was using a special mental et power oh, to God. raise those bicycles and it's so beautiful sue and they're flying over the sunset <laughs> and the music's going doo, 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 and they're pedaling and, and, oh, and, and yes and the moon it's, why are it's, they pedaling they, there's no point why are they pedaling well well that was a mistake no no it is fail. no it is not a fail and i'll tell you why okay if, if you okay, if you didn't pedal, there's no momentum to move forward. No, so it's magic. By pedaling, you're in the air. By ET. <laughs> yes, it, but uh, but I. Yeah. It's was not. There, ma- the, was there a jetpack on the end of those bicycles? No, <laughs> no, was no. Was there it an was invisible easy. road that was leading? No, up? no. Yeah. It was ET was using the power of his this mind. Then you know, don't they, need, to, they need pedal. to pedal. Well, yeah. but but maybe it's like he, he's not all you know perfect or whatever he's just <laughs> raising the bikes to kind of move you know, forward a little bit but the pedaling he, he just didn't know where he was going so they kept trying to you know pedal. you know okay okay yeah. Yeah. So okay stupid kids so anyway, no, no about- don't cut me off don't cut me off without me finishing allow Ooh. me to finish my my pedaling story i think if you're <laughs> go pedaling ahead. Go ahead. No, look <laughs> Look, we were all kids at one time and we're all pedaling our bikes. And you know how you're trying to go really fast and stuff. I think it was instinctual when these kids, if you remember the scene, Sue, that you know so well, as the kids (laughs) are pedaling really fast, the cars come through. There's a guy with a shotgun. He's going to blow the shit out of E.T. And, yeah, until, and they, until, they, until they removed all the guns from the fucking special edition. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's a different bullshit. They, could, they but, could remove but, the pedaling. Okay, but look. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah but why did as, they remove the pedaling? Can I finish? <laughs> can, I, can I finish? Am I allowed to finish? <laughs> all right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's <laughs> my point, Sue, is that the momentum of these kids and they're pedaling, they're pedaling, and E.T. raises them up. And it's like, oh, oh, it's instinctual. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. These kids don't know, hey, E.T.'s using his magical powers, so I'll just stop pedaling. I think it's their their momentum. It's their, what do you think I'm going to do? Maybe it's my pedaling that's keeping me up in the air. I'm just saying that it, it makes logical sense to me that they're continuing to All right. pedal. Okay, All right. Larry, You convinced me. I'm not the one who brought up the pedaling. You're aiming your, your victory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was James. Yeah, it was James. Was I think oh, you said. Oh, yeah. it was James. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, See, you're so apoplectic that you can't even remember <laughs> who's talking about it. <laughs> Just calm Thank, down. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Yeah, you don't like fine. ET either, do you? <laughs> I like you? ET, but it's just a finer point. There's no point in the pedaling. No, I That's just all. explained it. I just okay, explained okay. it to you. I, I can like- say that for me as a kid, the mm-hmm. minute I see that I'm floating now through ET power, I'm like, phew, I don't have to pedal anymore. Yeah, exactly. Well, because you were a lazy kid. That I mean, if it was me, <laughs> if, oh, no, just, if it was me, I, I'd know, be going, I'd be going, oh, I am, I'm no, no, I, you don't I, know what I, oh, I've seen. Oh, Larry, you're, Larry, you're, you're Mr. Larry. Cocaine, you're Mr. I'm going to get in trouble. For <laughs> me, I was on cocaine, me, I'd be pedaling I would, faster. <laughs> I'm just Larry, saying that we have to say this for a peddling episode. No, okay. I'm just gonna say this one thing. It's pretty obvious who's on cocaine tonight. Okay. Oh. I'm just gonna say this one thing, and then we can move on. Okay, and okay, and that is, on. look, as a kid, as a kid, you know, if I'm if that's me going up there, I'm thinking that the peddling's helping. I know, and so I, I continue to okay. pedal, and I know you. You go fuck this, man. I'm in for the ride. I'm. Well, I was pedaling. just peddling my ass off trying to get away from the authorities so yeah i might as it's floating take a, a breather 
You know, yeah. you know, you know, there was no peddling in Mac and me. That was a much better movie than E.T. <laughs> wow. I, I'm sure that creatively there was some backpedaling. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh. Almost right, worth next. the 20 minutes on peddling for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for putting a button in it. Thank you. You're Ooh. welcome. All how right. About, okay. How about um, this? Is one of those things where the voice replicators, where you just do so the international, the, 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 the trans- universal translators, universal the international translators. translators, a or the voice replicators, where they go, someone just puts something in their mouth, and then they sound like who they're impersonating. You know what I mean? It's mm. that, it's right, right. The, it's well, the I can impersonate somebody else. Yeah, I mean, universal translators do exist. You know, yeah. Much, well, pretty, but but like not like that though. But the complete mimicking of somebody's perfect voice. Yeah. Hey, but can maybe I, can we're I, getting rich there. little. Can I add to? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, someone sticks something in their cheek, and they sound like uh, Morgan Freeman. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> right, but, right. I would, I would add to that. Then the the thing that's adjacent to that would be like in Mission Impossible or any other movie where someone's wearing a mask. Yes. Mask, yes. And they pull yeah. it off. So that means they've been wearing that fucking mask the entire yeah. time, and <clears> that right. would kill you. I mean, to yeah. be able to be in that or aliens that wear an entire rubber costume to uh, simulate right. being a human. Right. I, I right. just don't see that well, working very well. Well, also, well, if Mission Impossible, it was uh, uh, John Voight, right? And, and uh, John Voight. And, and John Voight. Yeah, in the first one. And, oh, oh, the movies. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah. He, it, was, he was the, right. He was, and and uh, Tom Cruise was it. Right. And they never noticed that, boy, it looks like John Voight. But he's five three. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just yeah. feet tall or whatever. It's like, well, he, but he looks just like him. I don't know. Right, right. <laughs> Forget about bone structure. Yeah. No, in, uh, in, in general, though, in general, any kind of Mission Impossible type mask like that, it would always under scrutiny. Like you can tell it's something like you know what I mean. Like they're moving their mouth and they're like their teeth are different. Like it's, the spirit you know, gum would come loose and yeah, well, just like, like you can tell if somebody's wearing a fat suit, it just doesn't work. Well, yeah, well, yeah. well, I don't know about that. James. Like from far, I mean, from far away, if, if, from a distance. But if you're like interacting with someone on a daily basis, on a daily up, basis, yes. yeah. There's no way. There's no way. No, yeah. I don't see that working. That's a fantasy element. That yeah, that's not, in real life that can never happen. We just go along with it because we're we're used to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's also the the cloning when you uh, you find that someone who's they make an absolutely identical human I, that hasn't happened yet, except for maybe in the baby machine that. <laughs> well, there's yeah, another machines. cautionary. Yeah. It's like no good can come of replicating a human being. There's just no. It's cautionary. It's like boys from Brazil. There's yeah. no well, point. Are you, wait, are you saying that we shouldn't do that? We should experiment with that. Like you know, okay. So let's say you know. So like, if someone here is a big smoker or something, and you know, you're getting cancer of the lung, but at least you know they took some of your cells and started to grow a new lung for you somewhere in some little. Yeah, I mean, organ. You know, Organ cloning, you know. yeah, yeah, that's different. That's Where different. does it end? Yeah, Come on, we're, talking, we're talking about Don't replicating with, from hardcore Fendi Mud. What was his name? Hardcore, hardcore Fendi, 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 Fendi Mud. What have you been up to? Have you been drinking again? Drinking <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> well, well the, hey, the, f- fuckable robots. We're getting close. Those exist. We're getting, yeah. but not really robots. Well, no, they're well, not robots. They're called well. They Real just kind of lie there. Yeah. Yes. They're yeah. not the most yeah. sensitive no, I lovers. Probably, don't you think there are probably sex out, dolls out there that move? Maybe a little bit, Ooh. but but like, yeah, you know, know, erector set kind of moving. I, I need something <laughs> a, a little more fluid, you know? <laughs> right. So like what, those what, dog wait, wait, robots, wait. you know? So what are you saying that, hey, where are the sex robots? Where are those They're things? really like are the you, Westworld you, kind. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Androids, basically. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. okay. But, but, like, like that, but that technology, like an ant, like a person, like a, I mean, like in Blade Runner, it was a replicant, but they're they're kind of grown, right? They're not like yes. machines. The, yes. Yeah. So yes. that's more believable to me. But like an actual android that is like you know that looks and sounds and feels and just exactly like a real human, that you can't tell unless like you take off their faceplate, you know. And right. But that's that's something that's kind of. That's a that's fail too. Like that's never, you, you know, yeah. Matt, yeah. Matt, you go to any sex shop in Hollywood, you know, they'll have things that vibrate <laughs> and you. heat up. If you can direct me to someone who's top notch. 
no. <laughs> well, even even in Westworld, which is like the prototype for this, as soon as the guy goes to sleep, her eyes start glowing. And you hear this. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, true. it's like, wait a second. You're good. Yeah. That have been sort of delayed for a couple of hours. You know, and like and, and we've mentioned before the original Westworld movie. It's a total feature fail to me that they can make that, but they can't make the ridges on the fingers work. Remember that was like a thing. That's how you can tell it's a robot because they're what they can make. They can make sentient robots, but they can't get a finger right. Yeah, you can't get the joints to go in. Yeah, yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, and 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 once again, we the theme here has been that everything goes wrong, right? Well, yeah, that's world, of course. That's the whole story is that it goes wrong, and then if you have a sex robot. You know, you're in this vulnerable position, yeah, and right. that's the last place that you want something to malfunction. Well, look, I don't know. I don't know fire guys, or look, I don't know if you guys have, have checked out the latest in robotic technology, but I, you know, I you haven't, know, Larry. They, but they're, they're, <laughs> tell, there tell have been a, they got. my friend. There have been a lot of advances in the world of robotic technology. Hmm. Now, a lot of these things, you know, they have like little four legs or three legs and stuff. Yes, but yeah. there are these robotic things that have two legs, and it's kind of like <clears throat> kind, of, kind of Terminator like in a way. But it's like I'm sure they'll get to your sex robot eventually. Well, thank you, Larry. Don't be upset that you know. <laughs> It's not I, there I do now, live but in maybe hope. in the next twenty or thirty years, when you're you like old and you need that fire, sure, crap, yeah, you know you, they'll have that sex robot by that yeah, time. Yeah, I want the yeah. Larry's upset. Caroline Monroe. He had a sex robot, but it wouldn't stop pedaling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. You know, look. If I had one, if I had one. I would want it to pedal. We could do like a, on a bicycle bill for oh, two. Bicycle bill that for two. Be, wow. kind of what a wow. waste of a you sex robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, wow. yeah, see, that, see here, here's the problem here, Sue. See, Matt thinks, I'm going to have sex with this thing all the time. Ah! I mean, don't you want like a partner robot? A partner robot that would Oh, I have humans for that. Too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> robots for that. Yeah. Well, well, okay. Well, you don't want a robot who's like going to nag you to take out the garbage and wash the dishes. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, okay. no, no. Minus the murder. James. Impressions of your sexual partner. <laughs> James, oh. I would have, I would have the robot. Oh, if she just wouldn't shut the fuck up. Oh. <laughs> Hold hey. the log. Where's uh, where's the zip it button? <laughs> <laughs> Look, J- right. James, I would if it's a robot that you got in your house that is there to uh, service you whatever you want. I'm sure you would have the service robot take out your garbage and do the dishes. Oh, well, okay, and, good point. And, yeah. you know, it's like, like what, a what sleeper. You... Yes, oh, there you yes, there you go. yes. Okay, but you know, well, as far as as far as AI goes, you know, smart homes which are, you know, now it's an actual thing, but it can go too far again. The cautionary, That's a good one. Yeah, Proteus, yeah. Proteus 4 from Demon Seed. Yeah. Once it's taken too far to actually impregnate your wife and try to procreate. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oops. Um, that kind of power, right? Uh, run amok. Bad and, kitchen. And again, you know, it's like AI, so many complications. It's like replicants, like emotions, do they uh, not have emotions? Right, like right. Da- data like, and all that just do, do they have a soul? You know, yeah, what's right. the Will Smith one with the robots going crazy? Uh, I robot, right? I, I robot. robot, right? Yeah. That's another one. And he is one. And here's another thing, you know. But some of the things that are future that we are getting some of those bionic arms, sort of, yeah, to right. the extent of the movies. But certainly, the technology moving forward on replacing limbs and yeah. The, but also, yeah, but also Very just promising. Like, yeah. Yeah. And gen- but g- general like domestic use of robots, like there's a movie, a Michael Crichton movie from the 80s called Runaway. <clears throat> and <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's with it's a fun movie. So Tom, Tom Selleck is a cop and his specialty in the force is taking care of, of runaway robots that go bad. But the robots in this future are they're like they're drones, you know, and household machines, like kind of like a like a Roomba. Like they kind of predicted that pretty well, like that robots. Yeah. But like things go wrong, so they have to go in and fix them. And sometimes they go awry and they get dangerous. So that they got right. But in the same movie, uh, Gene Simmons is in it as this bad guy. He's making these killer robots, but he has this gun, and this gun is it's a smart bullet. And so it's basically a gun that shoots a miniature heat-seeking missile, basically. And it, oh. locks, on, it locks onto the target's heat signature, and it will chase them, and it will get them 
go around corners and everything, which is great. But the when they the way they do it, they show that they he fires the gun and you're you're watching the POV of the bullet. And you just have to be in a light jog and you'll outrun the bullet. You know? <laughs> it's like, it's like, like, it's really scary when you think, Oh, he should have, I mean, you shoot a bullet. It's instantaneous and it kills you. But this thing is just taking its time. Just be in a light jog and go inside a store and you're refined. To quote Peter Falk from the in-laws serpentine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Speaking about weird weapons in um, the wild, wild west the most recent one, whatever that was. Will Smith. The, the, yeah, the movie. Kevin, the Will movie, Smith yeah. Kevin, was it Kevin Klein? It yes. was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they had this moment where they are wearing metal collars. Yes. That right. if they, <clears throat> I think it's like if they try to go out of a certain zone, a flying saw will come and saw <laughs> their head. Do you it seems not very practical. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> It's the most convoluted, weird weapon. And they're yeah, just that, whole, that whole movie was convoluted, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But, <laughs> but, okay, so we've talked about robots, and now we're crawling into the territory of cyborgs. We were talking about the prosthetic limbs. Right. And hmm. a fail would absolutely would be the $6 million man, because all oh. those bionic limbs uh, would not be able to work with a flesh and blood body because you know he's lifting cars and stuff, and the right. the, the body right. limbs are he's, attached to real bones. Well, yes, yeah, yeah, because it's just pieces. It's not. Yeah. yeah, I always thought too. Like if it's one arm, the other, his real arm is going to get like it's going to go bad after a while. The muscle is going to go bad. What, you know, what's I he like, going to look like when he's ninety? Yeah, imagine this. He's like <laughs> really <laughs> nice <laughs> legs, I never thought arm, of that. and then he's he looks like, like Popeye. Oh, like one, like yeah, he's well, hanging for dear life from yeah. These, Limbs. Well, Matt, That's and I true. will, and I will say this: another fail is when when we were kids and it came out, it was a six million dollar man. If you did it today, oh, yes. it would be oh. like the six hundred million dollar man million, or six yeah. billion right. dollar okay, man. Well, like, and then, about, like, and then you ask yourself, do we really want to spend this kind of money just on this guy's arm and a couple? I know, I know, right? <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. He's, he's is, more, yeah, more work just, than he's worth. Let's let's yeah. just give him Viagra and a bicycle, and then we'll call <laughs> it a day. Thank you, thank you. But see, that was right. always my problem with Robo. Cop too, because we're gonna. No, I bought that one a little more because no. he's encased in that thing. Yes, he's but, encased but why, in it. Why do we need a? If we're gonna have a RoboCop, make him a robot. Don't no, make him he's a, a human. Horse. The human no. part is alive. No, but but no, why he, do we need, need, you need that? You needed the cop skills still. Uh, yeah, he was from his mind to to, to, yeah. to, to do his don't, job. What did he do? He would Robo walk, into, he would walk he, into a situation and start shooting people. No, the, he gets, the no. other robot, the other prototype, ED one hundred nine or whatever. I know that one. That was a fail. Know. Yes, they needed the human element. I, yes, yeah, yeah, because I, the I human think the element in policing has been so effective. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, Sorry, Sue. Sue podcast? Sue, what podcast is this? <laughs> Sue, it's look, Sue, it's it's not perfect. It's no, Sue, it's not per- false incarceration. What, what but, is this podcast? Look, <laughs> it's, it's not perfect, okay? Uh, but the human element. There are a few bad important. eggs that are Robocops. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. But what I still don't get is okay. He barely even remembers all that stuff. Yeah, he's got this. At first. At first. And when it comes to building this thing, wouldn't you want an actual robot and work on the brain, work on the synthetic brain and get that right first? Because the organic parts of RoboCop are going to fail. Yeah. They're going to. Eventually. I think he was was an experiment, though. You know, I think they were still. Okay, well then. All right. I'll give you the brain then. The chin. (laughs) <laughs> why, why? Why is his well, chin exposed? Because you have to see some of Peter Weller to get, no. get to get his acting in there. I mean, right. come on. <laughs> well, it's, it's, well, that's talking from the movie enjoyment standpoint. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about yeah, if I see RoboCop, I aim for the chin. Yeah, right, right. That's well, true. He should have been encased completely. Probably his yes, face true. covered up. Yeah, I, yeah, I buy that bullet. Look, move. Sure. I don't have I don't have the answer for you, but I bought it, and I just think you're shitting on RoboCop. For no, I love it. Ooh. I I, yeah, I, no, I love yeah, it, I love and it. I buy it in that universe. I'm just saying, in real life, uh, cover hey, his chin. Hey, here's one that like is kind of interesting to me. That is a kind of a minor fail. First, as a success, of course, we know we know Star Trek totally predicted the communicators, the cell phones, I and mean, that's yes, yeah, that's like yeah. really spot on. I always thought it was interesting in in Blade Runner. They had the vid phones, you know, 
And it's mm. almost like a, an alternate reality or an alternate future where that cell phone technology was never created. Because what's interesting in Blade Runner is you have, they're like, they're like public pay phones with just the videos. You know, you could, you know, you can like, you punch in and you get the person's screen come out, but it's, it's kind of like a, you know, you can tell it's a public phone and the, the screen's kind of dirty and it's, but they right. like, well, yeah. Still, yeah, it's really cool. But like people still use that. There's no such thing as just like the handy, you know, cell phone. I just found that kind of interesting. They kind of wanted to still keep it a little utilitarian, you know? There's a couple things in that movie that I'm surprised didn't become more popular. For example, the light up handle of the umbrella. Oh, yes. Yeah. Somebody's going to make that. I would totally buy one. Oh, I would buy that. that. I know I that there are people that make replicas, but I'm surprised yeah. that that. Like someone didn't yeah. see that in the movie and go, oh my God, that's brilliant. We should it's have genius. Those. Like in Japan, I want to see those people yeah. walking around. Right, right. Come on, those are awesome. I know. Yeah. Well, the computer technology where he's looking at the uh, picture on the yeah. TV screen <clears throat> and he can zoom in and change angles and stuff. Uh, well, it's I like, think they, they also totally got right the digital billboards. I mean, that's, that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's oh, that yeah. is a thing. Yeah. Not, yeah. not floating in the sky yet, but. But there's digital well, boards. Well, the yeah. Goodyear blimp, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. They, they kind of what got that. We haven't gotten right is the interactive hologram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. I, I always, I always well, say VR head. Yeah, but if, if you're the words, I guess I'm also thinking of the uh, whatever the Will Smith movie we're talking about, and he's asking him questions. The doctor who's left breadcrumbs for him to figure the whole thing, and he goes, "You're not asking the right questions." And it's like he's talking to a helicopter. That's a projection. That's not an interactive. Right, <laughs> and also physically interacting, I, I I just can't buy too. Like the holodeck, I love the idea that you can be around in a world walking around, but when you start picking up things and stepping oh. around like how that's not that's, I can't, that's fantasy to me i can't wait for that holodeck man i tell you <laughs> well, yeah. all the all the vr holodeck type but, stuff has borne itself out except you need goggles there's never been a situation right. where you can do it without goggles however right. i'm going to tell you sir you know it used to be that to watch something in 3d you need the glasses and there is a technology that exists that allows you to see 3D. Granted, it's a smaller screen, yeah, but yeah. it's glasses-free 3D. <clears throat> yeah. Now, it's like, you know, we need to keep moving forward. need to keep pushing that button, you know, keep keep moving ahead. And, and to, you know, don't stop. Don't rest on your laurels. Just keep moving because eventually we'll get there. Sean, I think we're going to get to that holodeck one day. But it's, well, you know, yeah. I still think but, you're going to have to clean up the holodeck after, well, that's you know, true. Yeah, you're, 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 <laughs> I'd hate to be the guy that mops thing. that place up. But well, um, it, you know, it, it, this is the thing. I actually wrote this down, you know, like when when you're in space you know you need everything that you have you know it can't be wasteful you have to use everything that you have so can you imagine you, you know you're on your spaceship and you know you gotta use the bathroom or something or you know you're sweating or whatever and there's this thing that collects all of that stuff and puts it in to some little sack or something. And do they mix it up with like, yeah. with, well, like in the replicators, like go oh, the replicators, like, like what is in the replicator? The food like, replicators? Like, yeah. They're yeah. babies. Work? They're tiny well, babies. <laughs> well, yeah. well, they, they, they food. make food. Look, but what, but no, what is that? No, have they, no, Sean. It's like, have okay, they ever explained chicken. though? Have they ever chicken. explained? Is it like an, or, like a general organic matter? I, that well, the computers okay, change look, into whatever look, food you want? It's like the transporter. No, no, you know, it's in a chicken McNugget. You're rearranging. Molecules. Yeah, yeah. A a chicken McNugget. Okay, it's like, oh, okay, so it's chicken, you know. But it's like, is it like, do they take the whole chicken and throw it in there with feathers and beak and all, and it grinds it up and makes this little paste? They they have the genetic. There's Map no, of there's a no chicken. babies in the back room, and there's no food behind the replicator. Yeah, no. you're thinking in such literal terms. It's like it's organic matter, or it's yeah that it's, they it's, reconfigure it's, molecules and yeah. atoms into a chicken or which an we, apple, which we or certainly whatever. don't. Yeah, which we or certainly don't have that technology. Salad and yet. coffee. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. But chicken <laughs> salad, right. Exactly. Coffee. We don't have the holodeck, but we do have an AI, uh, the equivalent of Doctor No. Do you remember that? The AI with Haley Joel Osment. Yes, yes. Yeah. He's, he's looking for things and he gets to the sort of Alexa of where he gets into the at a fair ask. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, and yes. It's, right. And it's really annoying. And, you know, yes. I love 
Robin Williams, but he's yes. just voiceover. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, but yeah. That, I mean, that's, I mean, that's I, bad. Look, that's, I had yeah, a lot yeah. of problems with that film. It was almost like there's like two films in one, you know, with yeah. a yeah, big story about it. It was yeah. two, two it was, bad it was, films in one. It, it, well, no, no, no. You know, it's like Stanley Kubrick had an idea and he was yeah, talking to Yeah, yeah, right. Hey, but, like, but, Steven, but neither, I neither ideas were real fleshed out correctly. No, right. no, right. Yeah, I agree. Know. But yeah. but you're right though about Alexa. I mean that's a real thing that is like I mean that's yeah. that's a future you know that back in the fifties would be like computer do this so like yes. what is the weather but today? Here's the, but here's yeah. the comedy. Amazing. Here's the comedy. You know you're saying oh yeah. here's you know, the human comedy. element. No, but it, it's like how often I remember <laughs> going to a friend of mine go, going going to a friend's house and he says Alexa play such a and she goes playing da, 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 and he's all no 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 play this and she's <laughs> playing this he goes no that's no that's listen play and he kept saying something and she well, was yeah saying, i mean they're arming out like, the kinks obviously yeah, yes I mean, well <laughs> the kinks it's like it's like uh you know if you were said oh we gotta iron the kinks and the alexa would go playing the kinks you know it's it's like it's not perfected it's it's no, but it's, it's but still it's not pretty pretty, that, pretty impressive to me has anybody has anybody that. seen the uh the south park post covid special <laughs> no because um, it's no. supposed to be like really 30 years interested. 30 years in the future and COVID's still around, but the, 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 they still have, like, they have the Blade Runner billboards. And, uh, <laughs> Alexa Alexa is embodied in a woman. It's, it's, she actually has sort of an anthropomorphic form, and she's just this really annoying, nagging partner. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, that, I don't trust Alexa. Don't no, trust me neither. Her. I don't like her. A boxer with a microphone in my nope. house. No, no. Right. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. So uh, not with all the uh, not with all the Nazi paraphernalia I've got. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Sue's 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 just joking. She's oh, just joking. You, know, she, you think you're going to get rid of my AK-47s? I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you're, so, you know, we just like to joke. You know. Oh, thanks, all, Larry. Okay. Um. <laughs> Here's one I have a real that's big problem that's with. Let's remind a joke. Remind yeah. everybody it is. Let's <laughs> remind everyone. Yeah. yeah. Disclaimer. Now, this is something that I've seen in a Star Trek movie in the, in the 2009 one, the J.J. Abrams movie. Right. And then I also <clears throat> saw something like this in the recent Foundation show. And it is ground to space structures. Oh. This is, bull- this is yes. bullshit. Right. So anytime you have something that starts on the ground and then goes up all the way into space. Yeah. That's nonsense. Why would you do that? Why would you? In Star Trek, it's a drill. Oh, the drill. Yes. I remember the drill. fucking stupid. I know you didn't like that drill. No, I do not like the drill. Like that with, um, oh, shoot. uh, With Brad Pitt was up on some big thing in the beginning of the movie that he falls off of it. It's Tommy Lee Jones is up in the, he's fucking up the planet. What? Oh, oh, uh, Ad Astra? Ad Astra. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. don't remember. He, like, he's crazy yeah. up in space. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He yeah. 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 right. has a storm and he falls off in space, <laughs> but survives. Yeah. Well, there's, a, there's also, there's <clears throat> also toward the end of Interstellar with McConaughey, who's sort of kind of floating from space down into some earth atmosphere. Thing. It's like a book. Yeah. Yes. It's the but, space but time. Guys, get, guys, but, we're, but getting we're back getting to off, his laser, we're, we're his laser subject here. your a, drill. A building that starts from the earth and goes into space and foundation. It's like this space bridge. Right. And it's a physical right. structure. And How they built that. That thing is coming down. <laughs> yeah. like you went like halfway through the but thing is just crumbles what, no, no, while no, no, you're no, making yes. it. Yeah, uh, huge the w- parking garage. It's got a <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, think of the parking if you're going to have people working all the way up into space. Well, yeah. parking parking <laughs> is important. That is true. So, so but I do. If you don't get on that elevator, if you miss it, it's right. Too Ima- imagine yeah. the weight you would lose when they go. Take the stairs. Instead you know of, what, you know? <laughs> Matt? Matt, you know what I think? I I think that they feel that hey, if the structure gets up into space, once it's in space, then we're safe because being in space, it'll keep it steady. It's like, well, first of all, the Earth is spinning, okay? Right. And, yes. And very good, the, Larry. The amount. Yes. The, the, the Earth the is ama- round, by the way. 
Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Oh, oh okay. wow. Yeah. And and so it's like it's it's like the amount of material it would take to build that structure all the way up. I mean, you would need even if you had a massive base, it just seems like it's such a yeah. waste. It's it such a waste. Of, yeah, <clears throat> and very what? impractical. Really? <laughs> yeah, Ego, yeah. you want that tower to be? Oh, I want it to be as big, the biggest tower there. I want it to be on the space. Ego, yeah. Take my oh. my brag rod, you know, be in this building. But it's just we got to stop that one though. No one should be allowed to come up with any. And it would take it would take like things. like decades and decades to build. Like how oh, more you, than decades. You, know, yeah. you have to have giant robots build it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the subway here in L.A. is taking uh, 18 years to go three blocks. <laughs> now, I know. Now, I that know. is right. it's underground. It's underground, and it's very sensitive under there. Well, then they should you know? get the Horda involved. Oh, now, wouldn't that yeah. be the greatest? That's right. They can make all the tunnels. Oh, my like God. That. Oh, <laughs> see, if there was ever a time where we needed the Horda, it's now. That's yeah. true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Here's one. I want to throw one out that's not. I'm not sure about this one. I'm curious what you guys think. Because <laughs> this is one of the greatest, most iconic kind of weapons in science fiction fantasy. That's the lightsaber, right? Oh, I thought about this. Oh, wait a minute. I love the lightsaber. I love, the lightsaber is fantastic. But Me too. in a practical world, I, I understand that it's, it's an elegant weapon. You know, it's not a gun. It's not a blaster. It's, it's, yes. it's more elegant for warriors who know the way the force and all that. That's great. But you know, like, okay, uh, samurai or, or ninjas, you know, they would use a sword. But yes. you'd fail miserably as a ninja if you use a, a lightsaber because it goes, you know, it's, in loud, other words, it's, it's loud and you can see it a mile away. That's in other words, true. It's, yes, it's not, a really good point. It's not it's for, it's not for stealth. The yeah. power yeah, it's of not, it would liquefy yeah. their hands and their Well, maybe, but maybe they got, <laughs> let's say they got the handle right. They can, but I'm saying that like, it's a, it's a loud, bright weapon, so you can't you couldn't use it in a stealthy way. Really, it's like it's it, right. it's, it's not like a sword, like point. a sword, a saber, a sword. I mean, you can be you're silent and you can kind of just do it. Like, but a lightsaber is great in movies, but not practical really. Well, in real I, life. I think in I think in episodes one, two, and three, Lucas sort of tried to kind of backpedal on it and add to the Jedi powers that there was a lot more like telekinesis. I so guess, it wouldn't, maybe, they yeah. wouldn't. The Jedi wouldn't just be reliant on the lightsaber as their weapon. They'd, they'd oh, okay, have more maybe, power. Yeah, but yeah. why let? Why for a weapon? I would think that the one thing that's great about, like, say, a gun or something like that, would be that you don't have to get too close to your opponent. But that that and that's my problem a, with yeah a lightsaber. Is but it's a different I, kind of fighting, though. It's a different kind of fighting to me. Okay, I, you right. know. But like, I'm just saying, like, if you were like your assassin and you're hired to take out somebody. You'd be, be better off if you didn't have a gun. You'd be better off with a but regular a sword than a lightsaber because you have to wait, or do you have to wait till you're right up on the guy, and then turn the lightsaber on? And kill him, <laughs> you know, is, is there oh, yeah. is there like a is there a, a lightsaber silencer? Yeah, stealth mode, maybe. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and maybe it, maybe it maybe it can't really silence it. Maybe it just creates a different sound so it's like a fountain, <laughs> something relaxing, <laughs> yeah, you know, birds chirping or something. You yeah. Zach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'd be like a move, a, a moment, one of those movies where all of a sudden a bug zapper goes on, and someone with a lightsaber just goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. so now it's like, oh shit, sorry. Right. Right. Uh, right. I hate that sound. Oh my god. <laughs> well, the lightsabers are effective in killing mosquitoes. I will say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, the more you think about it, Sue, it makes sense. It's a bright light. It's the, the fizzy little, oh. you know. So if you were a little moth and you flow by, you go, oh, the light. Yeah, you're right. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, okay. This isn't really technology, but I do have a problem with it because it would get in the way, I think, of you doing your job properly with technology. And that is in Star Trek The Next Generation, they had this thing that was the scant. And the scant was like a unisex skirt that oh, the, yeah. the crew members oh. would wear. And it was only in the first couple seasons, but if like right. you were if you watch certain episodes of the first two seasons, you'll see people in the background, like guys wearing this little skirt. Now, 
As Is that we what it's called from, a scant? It's called a scant, yes. <laughs> and, well, in real oh, life, they're called uh, scorts. Scorts, right. Scorts, no, I'm serious. Look yeah, up, yeah, no. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. So you're on a ship. It's a, a pseudo military organization. Right. <clears> and <throat> look, I know that when we were watching the original Star Trek, there was all the mini skirts, and that was we know the reason for that. That was to right. give yeah. dad yeah. something a little to you know, <laughs> right. I know that was perfectly, perfectly logical. Perfectly that, logical that, that right. the women right. should wear really okay. short skirts. I thought it was for the lesbians, but it was for the, les- <laughs> okay, for the lesbians. Whoever you know what? It's a buffet. Whoever wants it should right. come uh, and a little sample. Something for everybody. A little something for right. everybody. <laughs> but with the scant, I would think a uniform with pants would be necessary throughout the ship when you're dealing with technology or the idea of that, you're going to have your underside open. How is that good for anybody? Like now you're in 10 forward and you're, and you're reading the newspaper and everyone's got to see your sack. And you know, like there's, there's no good reason for the scant in the future. Yeah. I can see that male or female. Unless, Unless you're an alien and that's where your face is. (laughs) <laughs> okay sure. all right i you know what sure. i stand corrected yeah well i mean if you're gonna get into that it's like how many times in action movies or and i'll just say in action movies or other because the woman who's kicking ass is wearing five inch heels and, you know, <laughs> right. it's, like, it's like the woman who was in the one of the more recent jurassic parks and the yes. entire time <laughs> she's wearing heels she's been <laughs> running from the from prehistoric beings, huge monsters, and she doesn't go, you know, I should probably change my shoes. I'm just thinking, <laughs> uh, maybe yes. Yeah. Well, so long, long, they're, long, they're, long, they're future in fairness, in fairness, that was uh, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, and she, my understanding is. She wanted to wear those pumps. She wanted to wear those. And I think that the director had suggested, well, she wouldn't be running around in these in these high heels, but she wanted to because she so liked we're it. defending her dumb decision. Yes. Well, <laughs> yes. Look, if it was me, I wouldn't I I would not be wearing the pumps, you know. Uh Damn. but I but, mean you only do that for relaxing, Larry. You yeah. don't have to do the exercise. Yeah. But it just, it just, but I mean, that's just going on with the scan, the bad costumes, things. That the, uh, do you yeah. remember when the next generation first started, they were a two piece. No, was it? It no, was all went, one uh, piece. No, it was, it was all one. Piece. One. It was one piece. Yeah. And what do you yeah. do with your hands? Yes. Yeah, and that was, but then they, got, they, they screwed up again with the two <laughs> piece that every single time anyone stood up, they had to pull the shirt Right. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like a, it was like a confirmation, like her. You know, yeah, her. It was like number one. Was the, number, number one. one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I I agree, Sue. I mean, hey, you know, I if mean, we're gonna look, look. Can we just have? Can we just agree to have pockets in the future? Let's just yes. have pockets yeah, and a zipper. Yes. A zipper. Woohoo! Okay. You know the reason why a zipper. Look, zippers still work in the future. I would think zipper was made a long time ago. Zipper's a pretty still, ingenious invention. You got and we I, I, still I, 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 use yeah. it to this day. Don't you think there's some things that you know? It's like the zipper air to like the you yeah. Know. You get like you know. <laughs> the, well, we're right now trying to bring back the bustle. The zipper. What's you the bustle? What? Are we? The what? Well, that's why everyone's putting fake. You know, putting in fake butt cheeks. It's basically putting. <laughs> <laughs> oh right! Yes, yeah. You know Wait. the thing that they, they would tie around the Victoria. No, Victoria? no. I tell me, Sue. No, do you know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> it's a. It was a, something in that period of time where the women with the big dresses and you have the boned in corset. And yes. Those yeah. Yeah. Things that you did is you tied something around your waist that was basically a pillow. Oh right. And when you put the skirt on, it made your ass. Stick out, you know. Those, those wow. are coming. Those are coming back. You know what? Back yeah. then, women used to care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just wow. with all the butt implants and things <laughs> like that, Larry. It was a joke, but let's get into it and break it down and <laughs> suck the humor out of it. <laughs> well, I, look, I I don't want to suck the humor out of everything. I was oh, oh don't you? Uh, no. <laughs> Hey, speaking I of, want, yes. Speaking of I Star like, Trek, I feel that's a good edit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Speaking of Star Trek, 
in the original Star Trek television show, we had the phaser, the pistol phaser. Yes. Right. When they nice. went to the next generation, they then decided, somebody decided, I, it was probably Roddenberry, to come up with these dust buster looking phasers. Yes. Yeah. And yes. What I don't get about that, at least the pistol one, it seemed more logical that you could aim a little yeah. bit better. Yeah. And it was easier yeah. on your hand. But yes. to hold a yeah. dust buster in a way that you're going to aim it yes. seems uncomfortable. For and also one. just aesthetically, it doesn't look very cool. Like No. And they tried to make yeah. it cool later, but it still always kind of looked either like a dust buster or a TV remote. Yeah. Hmm. Whereas what I always loved, a very unique design of a futuristic gun is the are the guns in Space 1999. Oh, those were great. Yeah, oh, that's those. really comfortable. Yeah, I love those. This is really cool looking. And before I forget, this was the first thing that I thought of when we were talking about doing this subject. And that is, we all remember Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. The Final Frontier, oh directed by God. William Shatner. Yes. Oh, as, my God. As I hinted in the beginning, they're all sitting around a campfire in yes. Yosemite, and yeah. they're having marshmallows. They're roasting marshmallows. It's a, and, that's and a cute scene. It, cute scene. It, yeah, but they have... A machine, yes, that dispenses marshmallows. <laughs> right. That's right. And, and right. they press a button. The thing goes. And you can actually get it for a while. There yes. was like a mail away thing where you could get a toy kind of version of that. <laughs> really? Could, yes. Oh yeah, and you could put oh marshmallows in like it. Like a yeah. Pez dispenser, almost. Exactly right. <laughs> but like the fact that first of all, it's you need a power source and everything to just get your marshmallows. Wow. Like, what, you know, like a bag, maybe. I don't know. A Ziploc yeah, wow. bag, maybe that, that would is, work. Yeah, but I yeah, mean, was talk silly. about unnecessary, <clears throat> right? And then we were also talking for the same movie. We we're talking about the um the Rocketeer, the Rocket Boots, and that fucking Ooh, movie. Oh, that's Bach clumsy. Yeah, that yeah. How, how would you balance and how there, would you? There'd yeah, be no just, way. Oh. There's yeah. no way. That <clears throat> like you can't even get in those little segways. You fall off of those things all the time. <laughs> I, I, right. How are you going to do a Rocket Boots? And yeah. also the mm. boots that you could go out and walk on the hull of the ship. Oh, well, yeah. Well, well maybe wouldn't that be I just guess. magnetic? I mean, yeah. Yeah. And then they, they changed the magnetic field and people, and then that's when the Borg goes off into the floats off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do like that movie, the first contact movie. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Except there's a fail in that one, which is they bring Alfre Woodard on yes. the ship. Yes. Right. And <clears throat> Picard is taking her for a little tour and they're walking around. They see a window and She's like, oh, window. And then I, I forget if either Picard or, or she taps Just on it. Yeah. And it's like a force field. Yeah. And she oh, goes, right. And she goes, <clears throat> no glass. And he goes, no, it's a force field. Why no glass? Yeah, that seems why like, would, what if, why, what why if would a, you not have glass? What if, what if there's a brownout for just yeah. a second? Yeah, like, right. it's like you're all dead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What? No, I want more than the force field. Glass yeah. is that? Yeah, that's too yeah. much to ask. <clears throat> that seems that's, too precarious. Yeah, that's like if something just goes wrong in the food replicator, like the toaster oven kind of goes off, and then all of a sudden, three crew members get sucked out of the side <laughs> of the building. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah exactly. right. Yeah. And someone just goes like this, going, "Oh, I just burnt my toast." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Matt, okay. there is there is wait really quickly, Sean. There is something about Star Trek Five that always bugged me, and that is. Well, there, there's a lot of things. I have so many right. problems with that film. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. but <laughs> if you guys remember, okay, whenever you walk through parts of the ship, you know, it there are areas where you can just you can just walk. There's no barriers. And but for some right. reason <clears throat> in Star Trek Five, they're thinking, Oh, Scotty's gonna take everyone to this special part of the ship yeah. and it's got a walkway, but there are these pipes literally going across that like like two or three feet off, off the floor. And it's like Put there deliberately, Joe, so the actors can go, oh, we got to step over this pipe because it looks like it's a place where people just don't normally go to. And they're painted bright red and yellow and green. It, it was so stupid. And it's like no one would design the ship no. to have right. pipes. <laughs> right. You have to walk over pipes to get from point A to point B. It was stupid. It's, yeah, that's yeah. A slapstick, <laughs> it's a slapstick comedy deck. Yeah. Right. It's like right. yeah. everything is Which, there just for a gag. Which uh, which Galaxy Quest kind of make fun of with that sequence of the down there and that you know all the machinery and they have to <laughs> yes, get a step through yeah. and they're like why is this here it's ridiculous it makes well, no also sense. the whole thing that, that you can always crawl through ducts 
that apparently yeah. all yes. the yeah. Yeah. systems why are, why are ducks enough for three people. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. <just> ridiculous. <laughs> and I wonder if there'd be like, oh, wouldn't it be disgusting in there too? Like it'd be all <laughs> dust filled and like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's also, I mean, and that's one that just hangs on too. Like, yeah, in recent oh, things I've watched. They still to this the day. ducks. Yeah, yeah, I know that's crazy. Oh, it, there, there's always somebody trying to get out of a building. Someone's trapped in the building, and the negotiator is saying, "Well, let's turn off the heat." And he goes, "How are you going to get out of the building?" Well, you gave me away because you turned <laughs> off the heat. I could <laughs> walk through the Holland Tunnel of ducks. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're always so easy to get into. Like, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, never just, locked. Yeah, never you just like shut. You just pull it. It's like Velcro's holding it yeah. on. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Well, it uh, is the future, Sean. So they have special Velcro. Future Velcro. Well, yeah. yeah, also, you probably should have one that's screwed in pretty good if it's the duck that's inside a prison cell, you know? Or- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, uh, here's another thing that is, comes up in the future that, you know, like it's, it's always like about jetpacks and this, which was your meal and a pill. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. oh, I'm tasting yes. roast beef. I'm tasting right. here's, here's my dessert right. pill. I think right. one of the greatest joys in life is eating and taking, you know, that's yeah, reasons to live. Totally. Oh, let's get rid of that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So here, take that vitamin that gives you that weird little acid reflux on an MC stomach. Be- <laughs> yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Well, it's like it's like Tang back in the 60s was such a big deal. And, yeah, you yeah. Because that's what the astronauts drank. And now wow. it's just... You it's powdered, find it yeah, it's shitty it. powdered orange juice. <laughs> right. I, you know, I, 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 li- I like that stuff though. I really did. Well, my, as a kid, as a kid, as a kid yeah. I, ate, I ate the powder with a spoon out of the can. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. I did. I loved it. Oh my god! <laughs> I used to yeah. snort it. Oh, it's basically <laughs> sugar. Yeah, yeah, sugar. Yeah. sugar. Yeah, right. You just ate out of the can and just spent the whole you know, running back and forth with your your mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I guess a lot. Very similar the, to the pill food is the pill sex from Barbarella. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah oh. right. you pill, where you yeah. take a in the future, you take a pill and you have sex, and you yeah, how does that link work? arms. You you uh, yeah. How does that work? You, you go palm to palm, right? And, right. Uh, and then all you're supposed to feel all this wonderful sexual feeling. Yeah. <laughs> or the <laughs> orgasmatron from Sleeper. One. Right. Yeah. 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 What? What did you say, James? The orgasmatron from sleep. That's what I was going to say. The orgasmatron yeah. is yeah. actually more yeah. realistic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I want to okay, know so how he- that works. Yeah. <laughs> so here's one though that we probably touched on before, but any kind of vintage sci-fi movie, when it comes to computers, the power and ability of the computer is measured by its size. <laughs> so like you always have a gigantic true, right? console that takes up a whole right. room right. and like because that and what's so funny though and ironic is technology in real life went the opposite way yes, yes. Yeah. shrink things yeah. down i mean now you and your cell phone is a whole elaborate powerful computer but like in the, like any 50s sci-fi movie you know it's like yeah it takes up the entire room and it's making all the sounds and whirls and it's like you know and even to the point even in the 70s and we had uh a great movie, but Colossus, the Forbin project. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. Colossus is like, it's in it's inside a mountain. I mean, it's like a right. giant, I mean, it goes on forever levels and levels, you know, even, or even the Krell technology and forbidden planet, you know, True. It's like, yeah. but it's always that it, always measured by its size. If it's giant, it must be really super smart and powerful. And it's kind of the opposite now. Well, well it's coming, it's coming full circle with those touch screens from, from minority report, because yeah, the, the phones are the miniature version of that and you don't have yeah. to wave your arms around. Right. Yeah, totally. Well, but there was a period of time just in our modern technology where the phones were getting smaller and smaller and it was the smaller, yeah. the, smaller the cooler it was. And yeah. I think that's been parodied in some movies where they're answering. Yeah. The Zoolander. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. Zoolander. Yeah. Right, they right. did that little phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what I would like to know, too, as much as I love this, I always wondered on a spaceship why they need so many blinking lights. (laughs) (laughs) I like be distracting. No, I like these lights lights. telling us. I like blinking lights. That's funny. I I love them. I love them. I love them. But But uh, but what are they for? That's there. Do you remember? Okay, Airplane Two, which had William Shatner in it. There's a point yeah. where he walks in this room and he's like this big light, all these blinking lights in this machine. They they pointed out and 
he says, I'm like, there must be some reason, some purpose for these blinking lights. What are they? Like, there's no reason. There's like future, super flashy lights. Or, and there's like, they didn't know what it was for. The IT crowd where Richmond sits in this room and he's, <laughs> his job is to watch this machine that just blinks lights. Yeah. <laughs> and right, he's, right. he's watching it and he just goes, that one blinks red. I don't know if that's a good <laughs> thing or a bad thing. You know, <laughs> right. it's a bad Right. It's funny you bring that up because how often you're driving and all of a sudden you, you know, you, you're going to turn, you do the clicker to make a left turn or something like that. Then you can't do that. And it keeps clicking and clicking and clicking. And it starts to annoy you. So I guess you're right. I guess maybe after a while, the blinking lights in the, on a spaceship would get annoying. So maybe yeah. it, it wouldn't be a good idea. No. Hey, how about this? Here's a thing. <laughs> here's a thing that I love. I am a fan of like the first two films of Star Wars. I love the yeah. first two films of Star Wars, and yeah, I enjoy <laughs> I? Em- I enjoy Empire, and uh-huh. Empire has the at ats. Yes, the <laughs> yes. Now, right. I love them. I love yeah, looking at them. Yeah. They look, <laughs> right, they're fun. Right, but but, but they're, <laughs> they're stupid. Cool. Why are yes. they st- they're, they're no, not they practical. Make, no, they make practical. Oh, listen, they, guys, a small they, teddy bear with a they, lasso can knock them over. Yeah, if they, they have yeah. hover, they have exactly. hovercraft and land yeah. speeders and ships. Why do they need to be? Why do they, a, a, a robotic elephant walking lumbering? Right. No need for it. it. It's strong. Yeah. It's tough. It, it's not you know, it's it, slow. They, they can be they have anti-gravity oh, technology. Guys. They don't no, no. Robotic elephants. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, rope, you, know you say it's slow, but it, it has a long stride. So you it's think, oh, it's so slow, but it's, it's got a wide stance. Yes, you come up does. from behind it and shoot it and it blows up. It's like no, it's, not it's, always. It's, yes, it, it's, it's got it's got like armor, Sean. I mean, it no. takes a lot to shoot they're, and they're, make they're it blow the, up. Larry, as as Matt said, they are the coolest things ever in that. Yeah. I love them. I but, love them. But they're not practical. Nobody in the real world would build that. They would just right. have a freaking jet. Playing, yeah, yeah. firing a missile. You need a real tall tank. Yeah, right. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tank, <laughs> tanks are more yeah. tanks are more practical. They have treads. They can go faster. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the le- and that's the other thing too that people fail to recognize is that the legs are so long. Yeah. Right. They're a liability. Yeah. Right. Right. Are and you saying the legs should have been shorter? Is that what you're saying? No legs. legs at all. It would have helped. A land speeder. Why couldn't it have been a giant yes. armored land yes. speeder? There you exactly. go. They have that technology. That's the most basic technology that farmers on Tatooine can use. <laughs> yes. And, and what about the other one too? The uh, the the ATST the, the, with the, the two, two legs. The, the, that's the chicken, even less practical. That's even right. that's even more ridiculous. If, if, if Ewoks right. can trip your vehicle, right. you're you're a fucking failure. <laughs> now, man. Now look, that's a fucking Sean, future fail. Sean, yes. Sean, I want to go out. Teddy bear campers. <laughs> can take it down. Now, now, guys, guys. In fairness, in fairness, if recall in Return of the Jedi. Those machines killed a lot of Ewoks before the Ewoks were able to best them. So, yeah. you know, yeah. you guys. So, but they're yeah. Ewoks. Yeah, they have guns. Yeah, but they. Yeah, but you've lo- got this bunch- technology that's made out of these alloys or whatever it is that can yeah. kind of bounce off a little bit of the lasers and this. Yeah, and that. yeah. But all yeah. you need is two Ewoks and two swinging uh, red yeah. wings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and, 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 and of course, all of a sudden it destroys. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I hit that with a proton shooting laser right bullet. right yeah that I mean, of course don't of course hit the it with a log for god's sake do not hit that thing with a log no <laughs> yeah and you could, you could the take them point. down by giving them a hot foot <laughs> yeah like of course that was the point of it, it was like oh like the the primitive yes you know, tree right, dwelling right. creatures can beat the techno but still yeah. like no, no. Uh-uh. send down just yeah just send down a freaking speeder whatever yes. a, a ship and blow the entire fucking forest away right a stormtrooper on one of those bikes with a machine even gun could have done a lot yeah. more damage yeah. right right but, but yet both of start- those things i love to look at yeah, no, they're fantastic yeah, sure. creations for the movies. Yeah. Well, also when you think about just the design of like the Death Star, and yeah. I mean all these things are they're they're absurd and in, in <laughs> ways where you're going that it's an entire <laughs> scene that you're well, yeah, let's learn. But it's yeah. just built for you to go. Holy shit! Look at that. That just is yeah, cool. right. Yeah. <laughs> but then yeah, on top of that, you- you've got this giant planet-sized space station. That has this open flaw. Now I know <laughs> yeah. that in Rogue One we get the whole thing, but yeah, yeah. 
But so, there should have been somebody else that went, wait a minute, that's not a good idea. <laughs> no, we should put a cover over that. No, yeah. see, let's, you're, let's just, you're let's no. a giant ship with a big red button says, don't hit this button. No, see, you guys are thinking, it's, it, you guys are thinking that, look, it was kind of an oversight, right? You know, it was kind of like, yes. hey. That is very know, human, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I, I can mean, bull, if I can bullseye womp wraps back home on Tatooine, I can, I can hit that. <laughs> Sean, that Sean, they thought uh, the Empire guys thought, look, it, it's such a it, it, no one's going to shoot a little thing. Well, that, that's the thing. idea, right? Yeah, but if you that know? wasn't bad enough, then in Jedi, they basically make it vulnerable all over again. <laughs> that's true. And it's it's easier to blow up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's There's true. more room to fly in. Yeah. yeah it, well, it's it was, it, look, it, but in uh, fairness, it wasn't it wasn't quite finished well, yeah, yet. Right. Right. The, 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 the Empire should have sent out like a big notice to everybody say, look, wait till we finish this, then you can <laughs> attack us. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm with Sean, Grand I'm willing to bet. In August. Sean, I'm willing to bet. <laughs> they said to themselves, they went, okay, look, guys. You know that little that airport thing? Okay, we got to do something about that to make sure yeah, we yeah. can't get blown up this time. Okay, <laughs> right, right. and I, and I bet that in that trough they had a cover or something, and there the guy who puts it up there. He goes, ha ha ah! Now let's see you try and shoot that right now. I think, I <laughs> oh, think, wait, we uh, haven't finished the, the whole thing yet. So uh, I think what it tells us is that in the future there's still red tape. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's like the guy had the idea and someone goes hey listen larry great idea but you know what we we've already built the thing and we're, we're not going back in and right if right you want to hold on your job you just why don't you just pipe down and just uh <laughs> look here's sue here's, sue i'm, here's I'm gonna agree bucks. sue i'm gonna agree <laughs> with you can you imagine the kind of criminal activity or stuff that goes on it's like look look Hey man, I know we need to check it, you know, at the safety inspector, but just forget it. We need to move on. We, you know, look, <laughs> no one's gonna shoot yeah. this thing. And I bet there was a lot of that. I bet there was a lot of shoddy workmanship on that Return yeah. of the Jedi hey, Death hey, Star. Come on, come on. When does Darth Vader ever come down here? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You had like yes. it was like you had like the equivalent of Richard Chamberlain from uh, the Towering Inferno designing all the uh, <laughs> all the all the protection for the. You know, it was like, yeah, just do it on the cheap. You know, no one's gonna care. It's like, so there's not many fires odds? starting. Yeah. So look, are you gonna do it again? Yeah. Are you <laughs> yeah. so? Are you saying this the Death Star from the first one is a fail, or the one from the third one is a fail? Both of them are. Yeah, both, both? to a point. To a point. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. that's a cl- that's a classic fail. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but right. um, space nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. The whole basis of that show is a fail. Yeah, you ha- you have to well, definitely suspend your belief for that. I mean, once, once you get past that, right? The idea that the moon could be torn out of its orbit and that everybody on the on Alpha Alpha survive. base could still survive, and that would, no, no, everything would be obliterated. Yeah, that all they needed to happen was a bunch of nuclear waste to explode, <laughs> and. The actual science, I read up on this too. And it's like, you're not only dealing with the amount of energy it would take to remove this moon from the <laughs> Earth's orbit. Right. But mm-hmm. now you've also got to get out of the s- sun's orbit you, to right. leave the right. solar system. Right. Yeah. And wouldn't they all die from radiation from the <laughs> from uh, explosions? Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. I mean, yeah. And yeah. cold. And I mean, well, I don't know well, what else. Well, also the idea that, and this has also been, you know, notoriously brought up all the time with Space 1999 is every episode of that show, they encounter an alien or a planet and they're just floating through space. Yeah. And like they, I think a couple of times, yeah, they go through a wormhole or something, but most, but like but it, gravity, don't they ever yeah. get caught right. into another, you know, yeah. sun's pull or a planet's pull or. Right. But it's such a fanciful idea. It, it kinda, I don't I, I kind of, I, I, yeah, I, I go with it. I go, I go with for it the, for the show, but no, you're right. But, it's okay. Let's, we can do this to every single sci-fi show. Oh yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's like, if you go to Star Trek, it's like, oh really? You can separate the disc and fly off and you can fly. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I buy that. That's so. kind of, I can I buy, buy that. I, mean, I buy that. It, that's a physical it, thing. More Put it, warp putting it back together exist. again is the hard part. There's no such thing as warp drive. Well, yeah. Okay, wait I a mean, second. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then, what about what about Stargates? You're like in Buck Rogers, Babylon Five, and the movie Stargate, it's like wormholes. It's, it's passing wormhole. through. It's a door to a, like whole other section of the universe. But, to, but like in Buck Rogers, they have, and I think Babylon Five, they're like they're floating in space. They're like these little 
devices that the ships go through. They're like doorways, like physical I, doorways. I, I buy that as a science fiction concept because it's like you're assuming that we've come up with a way to replicate a yeah, wormhole. Yeah, stable wormhole. Right, right. Yeah. And so obviously that can happen. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying we choose what we yeah. accept yes. to suspend our disbelief. That's so yeah. we can really get into it. But if you yeah. sit there and you go, I'm not really sure a cube can fly. Now, or <laughs> right. you know, they're, they're on a, a die, you know, coming back. I mean, if I start breaking <laughs> that down, as opposed to saying, this is one scary fucking bitching group of people. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, <clears throat> right. What I, what I always thought- spent, spent on bionics, that's, that's more than six. If each one of those is a six million dollar man. Think how- <laughs> wow. Right. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's Who true. true. Yeah. Cyborgs, yeah. Those, Six million, and they've got the eye, the whole thing. That's a yeah, lot. Or, or that's the Borg a lot queen. Of money. Yeah, she's like almost all, you know. <laughs> but they, the yeah. Borg do very well, though. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 it's all Bitcoin. It's all Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin Borg. <laughs> oh, man. Well, guys, this has been a lot of fun. I mean, we've, we've talked about a lot of these these future fails, but you want to you want to throw a, a few more, a few more. Let's okay. let's wind this up here. Okay, here's one, Larry. You'll like this one because it's a, one of your favorite movies. Okay, fifties. Uh, yes. This Island Earth. Love okay. it. And it's the the Interocitor. You know, these aliens give this human scientists this technology to build this. Basically, it's a TV. It it's is kind of like it's, like, it's a two way TV, an upside um, down triangle, right? But uh, <laughs> and it's just cool. It's like six forever to build is all these parts is super complex, but it's basically just a TV, or it's just like <laughs> it's just a it's a phone, or no, you know what it is? It's kind of like it's kind of like a fancy Zoom meeting that you're yes. doing. It's <laughs> right. like I mean, yes. only only you have the power to like from your end, you can shoot a laser at somebody yes. on the other end and kill them. But it's like it's a lot of it's a lot of work to just like basically just contact the guy. Like, you know what yes. I mean? Like, uh, like they didn't really have to do all that. I mean, was I it guess kind it was of to- a test though too? I it guess. was kind of yeah. a test. And that but, thing about the rays, that's if destruction is our goal, you know? Yeah, right. Like, so, yeah, right, so like right. if only like zoom technology has the power to like shoot lasers at your, at the other members of the, uh, of, of your meeting. But like, that I just thought was like a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble for Exeter to go through to get uh, get a hold of Cal Meacham and, yeah. and get him on the plane, you know. So that <laughs> that's was a, such a that's great one. movie, though. Yeah. I love yeah. that one. Sean. But that's one that always kind of like okay. Mm. I, I have one from, and I guess this is science fiction or something that I think is really cool, and I really wish that we had it. And that's in the TV series The Prisoner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. And it's the big ball. The ball. Oh yeah, the ro- yeah. the rover. The ro- well, where yeah. is that? It, yeah. Where, well, why don't we have that protecting that's, us? That's of, such a weird, I'm creepy. Call the cops. I'm going to have a big. Ball. Yeah. Well, well, you know, it's actually you know a what? good idea. Yeah. But, and Sue, you know what? In the original, when they were making the show, it wasn't that at all. It was like kind of like this little, like physical little car or like device on wheels that chased people around and just didn't work. It, it doesn't work. So then I don't know how I can't remember the story of how they came up with the. With the rover, but yeah, that, it, what it was, was originally it called rover. Rover, uh-huh. yeah. And but, well, yeah. and what was so mm. wonderful about those things is that they were so efficient in capturing someone and not hurting them. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think you could suffocate someone so they would die if you wanted to. Right, but right. Initially, it's just to just stop you. Right. And uh, I, I thought that was a brilliant idea. Uh, also, I love the uh, the concept of in you know, a number two's you know, office area, you had that background, the walls of the lava lamp kind of look. And to me, it was like that. What It was like, it was almost like that's where Rover came from though. It was like, a, it was like the Matmos from, oh, yeah. uh, from Barbarella. And it was like, it's like this living lava lamp and it produces a physical bubble out of it. And it goes chasing you. It's pretty yes, crazy. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Well, where was the, where was the crane? What, what was the crane doing in the control room? The big brain. <laughs> oh yeah, that yeah. That was, I think that was like a that was like the all all seeing kind of like camera and audio that was listening and seeing watching all the villains. Okay, villages, I'll I buy think. it. Well, it was the evil eye of Mordor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, but yeah, the rover is great, man. Yeah, we do have. I mean, there is that weapon that where they sh- can shoot foam. 
Yeah. And it traps, yeah. you know, there's that thing if you've ever seen, I've, you know, I've only seen it in some sort of, I don't know if they ever use it, but you know, where they can shoot and it's like, pop, 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 like with a gun and yeah. multiple rounds and it just all of a sudden you're basically just glued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's great. That's probably the closest thing probably to a robot. The closest it's thing like, to it. Sp- Spider-Man's web fluid does that. Yeah. Oh, true, true. yes. That's, but that's not real. <laughs> well, Dude, Spider-Man uh, is real. <laughs> a, a future fail that sticks out in my mind is the failure of Pan Am to reach space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, or Atari to last forever into the future. Yeah. Right. Pan Am had everything going. You're right. And yeah. uh, we we all thought that they were gonna make it to space in 2001 Space Odyssey. Yeah. And yet it wasn't meant to be. And that's true. And that would have been great because everybody with uh, Elon Musk and everybody else going into space to have that type of space travel where it's like taking a space shuttle. Yes. Like Earth luxury to the moon or wherever. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's, there's a movie and there's right. cocktails and yeah. Uh, I, I can't wait till that happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but someone will happen. not wear their mask and start a fight and, you know, yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be nice to have the ladies serving in their skorts. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, with their yeah. little pillbox hats. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Flight attendants. Flight attendants. Right. Oh. And, then they, and I also, when they went in some of the old movies where they come down, they offer cigarettes too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. Awesome. oh yeah. <laughs> oh, good times. Paul yeah. Mall? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, as they say in Sleeper, you know, smoking is one of the best things for your health. So. That's right. Oh. Yeah. That, that and, and red meat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Healthy cigarettes, James. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really. Fail. We didn't yeah. get it. <laughs> That's right. Right. Cigarettes are actually good for you. That's right. <laughs> All right. Anybody well, got a, anybody got another of... one? Doctor Who or anything? I don't know that. You guys are so into those that series, man. You know? I well, love Doctor Who. Some and, of us here, yeah. yeah. Well, some, some people are prejudiced, uh, but that's okay. I mean, uh, but, no, Matt, no, Matt, Matt but some, enlightened. But Matt, you and I, I guess we could say, you know, the, the iconic, beloved villain character in Doctor Who is a Dalek. But a Dalek is not very practical. Later on, they had them fly, they had them do all this stuff. But in the original. Doctor Who's early seasons. I mean, it was right. a little bit clunky. It was slow. Clunky, it didn't, you know, slow. it could be pretty easy to, all but they were so was, cool. All you had to do was go upstairs to yeah. get away from them. <laughs> right. And right. in fact, it was so ridiculous that any comedian that wanted to do a Dalek sketch, right. Be right. Somewhere in there, they'd be like, oh, they can't make it up the stairs. So, right. Yeah. That's pretty, uh, that's the, then later part. they made them fly. And then now yeah. it's cool because then they're like little spaceships. And yeah. In yeah. later Doctor Who episodes, you've actually got them almost like an armada of ships. Yeah. And and that's pretty cool. I mean, I know that someone might make fun of the sonic screwdriver, but I well, love uh, it. Well, yeah, but uh, what about the TARDIS being you know large in the inside, small on the outside? That's a that's a hard one to wrap your head around yeah, when it comes yeah. to that's are we like gonna that. see that anytime soon? Right, right, right. And I would say no. But man, I love the Daleks. Yeah. Oh. Thank you so much for bringing. Who doesn't? Me Sorry, I, I cut you off, James. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, 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 no! I just, we do it uh, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> we do. This is a this is a movie I'm not a fan of, but there are future fails, pretty famous ones in Back to the Future Two, where they project to 2015 and what that's going to look like. Right, right. With self lacing shoes, sneakers, and that's a like self. That's- yeah, and the hoverboard. adjusting vest and the hoverboard. Yeah, the hoverboard is but that's cool. But like, why would anybody want to create like self lacing shoes? Just make just just make yeah. shoes in the future that don't, don't have laces. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a coat. It's a self cleaning coat or oh self-cleaning. no, self drying, self drying, dry, right? And it would and dry the person too, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. And then uh, this isn't really tech, but as sort of a self fulfilling prophecy. In Spaceballs, where yogurt brings up all this Spaceballs merchandise. Yes. Yeah. All, the tie in, all the tie-in products. But ironically, <laughs> in order for Mel Brooks to get Lucas's blessing to make the movie, he had a promise that there wouldn't be any merch. So uh, you couldn't get any oh, of the Spaceballs yeah. merch that yogurt was oh, talking really? about. 
So that's a that's, that's to me funny. kind of a, a, a future fail that's that's, that's real. Yeah, I wonder if right. that's still yeah. in effect. Like, yeah, I wonder, you can course, get somebody. You can make, get yeah, you can make now t-shirts color. and 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 like face, but but not toys or action figures. There's been really? no unless licenses it's, unless for that. customized. Yeah, like a customized yeah. thing. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would think that maybe somehow. Yeah, they could work out a deal with Lucasfilm now or Disney. Well, me. that's just yeah. it. It's not owned by Lucas anymore. Right, I mean, he right. doesn't own it. So yeah. I'm sure they, Disney's if, probably looking to make a few bucks. So they're why probably not? Like, yeah. Hey. yeah. I'd, uh, I'd buy those action figures. The, the Lucas, what an evil genius to start the whole toy. You know, oh, meaning that, that you know, the toys would come out before the movie. I mean, that that sort of this the yeah. The, I mean, it's yeah. changing marketing entirely For, forever. Yep, it's all about not realizing how much of a success that film was going to be, and right. not having that stuff ready even. Like that's right. how mm-hmm. that's how well that film did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what right. movie is this what movie is it um star wars star, what is that oh, okay i just want to write it down independent so film i just want to write that down uh, i think it's, it's played with my dinner with andre and it was a double feature streaming on peacock yeah uh-huh. yeah, yeah based on a, it. it's based on a play <clears throat> uh-huh. it won the pulitzer in 32 yeah. and play uh-huh. yeah Wow. Well, we could go on and on. <laughs> I think we did. This I'd has been though, a lot of fun. It, it really yeah, has talking good. about future fails. Sue, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Yes, yes, yeah. Sue Murphy. It's my you know. pleasure. Larry, I miss you so much. Next time we have to be in person. Yes, I know. Yes. It's I always know. such a spirited show when you're on, Sue. I'm telling you. It really yes. is. Well, it's just, you know, when you come in with positive feelings. Okay. Well, <laughs> see, I was just about to say, I, I could have done without the no ETs here. But, you know, hey, it's a, you know, it's all good. It's no, all good. No, you know, it's all good. No, you know I'm joking. Well, sure. <laughs> Sue, you have to take a picture of that and send it to me because I'm going to send it to you. Thank you. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sue, is there anything you're working on? You want to let it? Yeah. I think yeah what's, what's going on in the world of Sue Murphy? No. So, <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Sue. What's, well, uh, what, you, what was for dinner? <laughs> no, we're not going to go but there. But, you know, jo- uh, Sue, it's always a pleasure. Well, Such I'm a joy just, to have you. I'm not here to plug. I'm here to uh, torture Larry and have fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I look forward to the day when we can see each other in the flesh. Yes. I think yes. the next but, one will be. I have a feeling we're getting back we're to getting that there. place. We're almost we're there. Getting there. Yeah. We're getting yeah. there. Yeah. Well, I would just like to take this opportunity to raise our glasses and toast. To Sue Murphy and Future Fails. Future Fails. We have a very special guest with us tonight. Oh, yes, we do. To give a very special Mm. announcement. What do you say we introduce our special extra guest? Well, I love this impromptu way that you did it. And uh, (laughs) and by the way, just to let you listeners know, we recorded this before the show proper. And so that's why you will not hear Sean, but <laughs> I will be playing Sean as done by Larry Strode. So go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm done. I'm, I'm Sean Sheridan. Okay. What do you got going, David Weiner? <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is great, David. We're so thrilled to have you. And I Ooh, have to say, yes, we, we were, we were honored. Monster Party was honored to be invited to the premiere of in search of tomorrow it this was so am- good amazing yeah. documentary about 80s science fiction films and uh, i don't know about matt and the, the rest of the guys but my god I, I sat there and i watched it at the end of the five hours man i i number one i wasn't tired and i'm like whoa, whoa, wait whoa, whoa, whoa there, isn't there more i mean there's so yeah. much chock full of science i just fiction clarify stuff, something I, he says by the end i don't know about the other guys but we already <laughs> talked about this and we all felt that way. Yeah. Why are you claiming sole credit for being the only one that went, is this it? <laughs> I was so happy that you guys came and showed your support. I, uh, COVID still exists. We all showed up at the Harmony Gold Theater in Hollywood wearing our masks. And we sat down for a five hour film divided in half 
with a intermission and a Q and A. So two and a half hours, another uh, Q and A within that hour, and then we finished off the film. You guys uh, showed your tremendous support, and I'm so happy that you actually enjoyed your experience. And uh, you know, loved yeah, I'd love to hear it. what you guys thought about. Yeah, it, it no, was David, so good. Uh, after In Search of Darkness, which was so much fun, even though, you know, again, that was like six hours in the dark theater. <laughs> I knew, I mean, I told you before this started, I know I'm going to love every minute of it. And I did. It's just one movie after another being profiled, interviews, uh, insights. And, and plus, In Search of Tomorrow, you, you, you break away to, to cover all these different topics having to do with you know, 80s sensibility and the, the things that informed the sci-fi of the decade, like the Cold War, like a, a lot of different things that were on our minds back then, the Challenger disaster. It was wonderful. Revisiting that era and looking at all those, at those amazing movies, for anyone who doesn't know, what I do is I take, it's such a long movie because I go from 1980 to 1989. And each year I go over a bunch of different movies of the genre from the era and uh, those larger context chapters in between. And revisiting all of those films that I loved and we loved so much, uh, it really began to dawn on me what I had completely abolished from my brain. And that was on a daily basis, we were always thinking about nuclear annihilation and we were living <laughs> in the Cold mm-hmm. War. Yeah. And, and what I started to realize is, of course, I remembered that, but I chose not to. You know, I have uh, selective memory. But uh, so many of these movies, whether it's Mad Max where we're in a, in a post-apocalyptic wasteland or War Games or Firefox, so many of these movies really just address this world that we were living in, in a way that made us think about it and reflect on it and try and maybe do something about it, perhaps, uh, or at least become more aware, you know, whether it was the the, the darkness of technology of Blade Runner uh, or an optimistic future that could be thwarted by uh, a bad guy, a genocidal maniac from the 20th century and the Wrath of Khan. Um, there's just so much goodness. And um, or if we want to just escape, you know, and back to the future. It was a real treat for me to be able to assemble 70 plus icons of the era to talk about this. And uh, like I said, um, it, it, it's a, it, I didn't say it. I will say it now. It's a journey. It's a journey through 80s sci-fi cinema. And I'm so glad that you guys responded positively to it. Well, I'm just glad that all this apocalyptic stuff that you were discussing <laughs> is now over and we don't have to worry about it. Anymore. That's right. None <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, it's a brand new day. <laughs> it's ancient history. Ancient history. That's right, my friend. Hey, you know what? I look at you now as like the Ken Burns of the genre. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I, I enjoy Ken Burns' work, you know, but you watch those shows and they're usually like, what is it, like two hours at a time or an hour? And you're like, okay, if I had to watch all of those in a row, I'm not so sure it would be the same experience. But like we've all been saying, it was not a problem at all to watch four hours plus of all this stuff. And you had a break. And I really do think, minus my bladder, that <laughs> I could have made yeah. it all the way through. Mm. Uh, well, it was that much fun. Absolute yeah. credit goes to uh, Samuel Way, who is my editor, who was the editor on uh, the previous In Search of Darkness, part one and part two. Uh, his work combined with uh, the cool motion graphics that Paul Konchik does uh, for us, uh, they just make this fly. And I think the uh, the fact that there are so many movies within each year, you know, it, it make it, they they sort of leave you wanting more. You know, I mean, I'm I'm the guy who made this movie, and I'm, I'm watching it, and I'm like, no, no, stick around for more Empire. That I want. Oh, now we're on to the next. Oh, well, you know, stick. I want to know more about you know Saturn Three. Oh, we're on to the next. But it, it gives you, I think, enough flavor of what those movies were about, yes. how they were influential, what the impact was. Um, maybe learn a thing or two that you didn't know before, or or re you know reassure what you already knew. But uh, you get to stroll down memory lane. And I think the whole idea is that, you know, you see how this all fits in the big jigsaw puzzle of the decade. Now, we were really lucky to see this, but I, and we've talked about it a lot. And I know there's a lot of listeners out there, a lot of people who really want to see this film. So, so David, what, what do you have in store for us? How can, these pe- how can people see this? 
Go to 80s sci fi doc.com, 80s, 80s sci fi doc.com. You can pre order the film between now and March 27th. Uh, and I say pre order because anyone who gets the movie now, they get to have their name in the credits, which is a <gasps> super duper cool thing. Oh, so wow. you get to have your name in the credits. You get a cool package where you get exclu- three exclusive posters. You could have a choice of Blu-ray or DVD with a slip cover. Uh, you get a digital copy of the movie as well after the nice. campaign ends after the 27th. Uh, and then we'll be shipping right after that. Uh, and so the movie is done. The trailer has dropped. You can see the new trailer on uh, 80s sci fi doc.com. And uh, it tells you all about who's in it, what, what it's about, uh, and different perks you can get, all that kind of stuff like that. This is a crowdfunded project that we get to do ourselves. And it takes it's a little uh, unconventional in terms of like, oh, well, can I just get it on Netflix or can I just buy it on iTunes? You know, this is a labor of love. And so the work that we put in, uh, we want to get the best return and we want to get it directly to you guys. And people like having physical copies, you know? Oh, yeah. uh, oh and, and gosh, I do. Yeah. It, it, it looks yeah. good on your shelf. That's all I could yes, say. And so 80s sci-fi doc is where you can get it. And speaking of credits, by the way, I want to give you special thanks for including me in the credits <laughs> for a special thanks. That was a thrill. It made me very happy. Well, you are were instrumental uh, in, in helping me get some talent uh, for this movie. I don't know if you want to say the talent or we could just keep we, it, you know, on, you know. We can, well, we'll, we'll put it, we'll keep it on the, on the DL. But yeah, uh, there were a couple faces in this movie that uh, you directly connected me to uh, that are in the movie. And I'm incredibly thankful and credit where credit is due. You guys have always been amazingly supportive. Uh, everything always. from coming to the premiere to whenever I come to shill a <laughs> project, you know, it used to be like, hey, we want David Weiner on. Now David Weiner's like, can I please be on? <laughs> well, we love you. It's, we it's well, easy. We really we do. love you. And we love Likewise. everything you do. You're like one of us, David. And, you are, yes. And uh, you know we're all in the biz, and and see, <laughs> well, no, uh, but, I'm on the edge. But, yeah, but, uh, but, okay. but 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 David, seeing this film, this documentary, it it made me so happy. This a huge chunk of my life, ten years of 80s movies. I mean, just when you show the one after the other, it was just such a thrill. And and let's just say, hey, maybe you're a listener and you're you were born in the 90s or 2000 or something. The 80s were a great decade for the world of science fiction. Huge. And it was a tremendously influential decade in terms of cinema. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not just like quote unquote movies. Some of the greatest movies ever made that sci-fi action, uh, supernatural, whatever the movies are that are coming out now, they all stand on the shoulders of some of these giants that came out in the 80s. And so uh, when when you're recontextualizing these things decades later, I think it's very important. Uh, you know, a lot of people are blown away by just how much of the density of quality product came out during that time. You know, Tron, uh, you know, all the Star Trek movies, you know, all the original trilogy, you know, Empire Strikes Back and, and Return of the Jedi. But, you know, you had all these quirky fun movies. You had Buckaroo Banzai. You had Mega, <laughs> Mega Force. You had Megaforce. Runaway with... Gene mm-hmm. Simmons and, and Tom Selleck, you had Earth Girls Are Easy, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah. I mean, it's just all over. There were three shrinking movies. Yeah. There, were, there, there, there was what? There was Inner Space. It was, Space, all, it was, was all the Honey, rage. I Shrunk the Kids. There yeah. was uh, The Incredible Shrinking Woman. You got the Joe Dante movies, Inner Space and yeah. Explorers. I mean, it just goes on and on. <laughs> and, but, and let's not forget. I'm still waiting Mac. for Shrinky Dink the movie, by the way. <laughs> You had you had a piece of Mac and me in here. You talked about <laughs> Mac and me. I mean, that is just crazy. I, I mean, I, as much as I despise the film, I can't tell you how happy it was yeah. when I saw that you covered this. Well, and it, it, the it, film is a, your film is full of surprises. I yes. think it's important to show the balance. You know, there's a there's a whole generation, yeah. the video generation, that may have seen Mac and me before they ever saw ET. And so it has a place in their heart and it's important to them. And it's a kid's movie. And if you're a kid 
You're fine with it. If you're not a kid, it's Dang. problematic. Listen, I, I, there's some, I, they're great, great little dance numbers, you know? That's true, yes. Uh, and, there's some know, great dance numbers. It's goofy and silly, but when you when you learn the story through our through this documentary about why it was made and how it was made, whatever you think of the movie itself, I think it's an interesting story told it's by fascinating. the director himself, yes. which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Raphael. And, and it starred the original Ronald McDonald. Yes, that's right. right. That's true. The guy who was in the commercials was in there, and they, I, I they shot they shot in uh, the city of industry at a McDonald's called the Shooting Store, which they changed after there was a shooting at McDonald's. But it's the Shooting oh, Store, God. and they shot the movie there. And uh, I did a, a McDonald's commercial there myself back in the nineties as well. Wow! So I feel oh. very connected to all this. In fact, Mac Mac is right with me. Does he want to come out? No, he's too shy. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so David, one last time for our listeners, where can they go to check this out? 80s sci fi doc.com. Please check it out. Uh, you can see the trailer, you can see all the perks and the cool things you get. Uh, the we are running this campaign to pre order it, get your name in the credits through March 27th, and after that, that's it. So if of, you don't of, get it between now and then, of 2022, then that's Not- that's correct. It just uh, you know, in just in a couple weeks. <laughs> and so, what's, you know, if you miss it, you miss it. And you're going to have to bug the Monster Party guys for a copy. <laughs> Whoa, wait oh, no. a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> you, you, you're barking up the wrong tree. We're not we're, we're not the best of sharers. No, <laughs> yeah. we're not. But, David, thank you for sharing your wonderful work with us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, well. bud. Always, always appreciative that you guys have me on, whether it's uh, to plug something or just to be silly and wax poetic with geek. And David, David, we appreciate your support, too. Let's not yes. forget that, that thanks to you, we were profiled in Famous Monsters magazine, which oh, is every yeah. monster kid's dream come true. That's right. Podcast of the month or the issue, which was mm-hmm. very, very cool. And uh mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, maybe we're just back scratchers. I think that's where we're all a bunch of back scratchers. But you don't scratch anyone's back unless you actually admire them and think that you come off well if you do something for someone as well. There's sort of a merit to it. So uh, we're back scratchers with merit. No, but you Ah. guys are all... Listen, listen, James, you were the ultimate cosplayer at Comic-Con. That's really (laughs) why I hang out with you guys. (laughs) He is, he is. (laughs) All right, David. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Love Thanks, the Thanks, guys. We'll have Take you care. on Thank again you. soon. Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. Teacher shout out. <laughs> what is Fail wrong with this shout out? out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to give thanks to a couple of uh, listeners who have been very supportive on social media. Uh, one of them is uh, Mark Freisner from Defiance, Ohio. Mark Freisner. Oh, Mark Freisner. To him. show you how supportive Mark is, on, on his Twitter ID, his little description, he writes, I love the Browns, Buckeyes, Monster Party podcast, and ice cold beer. <laughs> wow. Hey, nice. nice. all right. That's living right there. Yeah. <laughs> Presumably in that order, but we appreciate it. <laughs> That's fine. As long as we're in there somewhere. <laughs> we're, hey, we're, we're, we're before we're, beer. We're, we're like, in the wow. headline. Yeah. I would not have put us there, but okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. We appreciate that. Also want to shout out to Frenzy of Tongs, nice. uh, <laughs> Connecticut punk rock band. All right. Uh, who, who often uh, recommend us to other uh, social media followers, cool. particularly on Twitter. Frenzy of Tongs. Frenzy of Tongs. Very cool title. Yeah, very uh, we're, cool. 3,000 miles from where you guys usually perform, but uh, if we're ever in Connecticut, we're going to try to check you check out oh. your show. So. <laughs> oh, we <Yes>. will. <laughs> and guys, I got some special news for you. Uh-oh. Believe it or not, <laughs> after eight years of trying, guys, we have been nominated as the best podcast for the Rondo Award. Woo! How about that? Huh? Wow. Yes. See, all that hard work paid off. Oh. Over 200 episodes. Our life is complete. Oh. Yes. Yes. Always We've been, a now, bridesmaid, never a bride. Well, right. no, no. Now, now, wait a minute. Now, we're We've been nominated. nominated. We're nominated. Hey, yeah, we're we nominated. haven't won. We're still you in see, the running. That's we're right. So, and it's a lot of other amazing contenders. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So here's the thing. If you love Monster Party and you think that we are the best podcast out there what you can do is you can go to the rondo hatton awards that's h-a-t-t-o-n 
Awards, and you go to their page, and it'll explain that you can vote for us. And the funny thing is, they have all these different categories, like what right. you think the best picture, horror of the film, best of the poster, years, books, but, the, and but guys, so you don't have to mark everything. You can only if you just want to go to the podcast and just vote for us. <laughs> you can if you're There's, pressed for time. No, yeah. no, no. It's like it's, it's it, you know, it's like the Emmy Awards. You know, you don't have to you know nominate you know every right. category. Right. So so don't be you know freaked out about but the thing is is you only have until april 27th to vote mm. so yeah, i strongly so tell your friends, yeah, tell your friends tell you go hey strangers on the street they, to vote yes, for us those great that great podcast i think we should vote for them for the best podcast out there they pay for billboards to be put up saying well, vote from monster find, party find, uh, find dead people to vote. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, sky, sky, no, no, sky look, Hey, it's and, horror. You know, like, look, yeah. hey guys, and to be fair, to be fair, you know, you, I don't want you to be going like a bunch of different times and voting over and over again. We're not Is that saying not allowed? that. No, well, it, it's frowned upon. They don't oh, want okay. you to do okay. that. Well, so, you know, but it's just, just, but we would appreciate your vote. Yes. And it Shower. would be oh, world to us. Very but it's so. a huge, it's a huge honor. And, and we're, is, we're thrilled to be acknowledged and nominated. And, and if you happen to be one of the listeners who maybe wrote us on the ballot a year or two ago, then we really appreciate that because Absolutely. you helped us yes, get nominated. Yes. Yeah. And uh, also, hey, let's uh, throw out some congratulations for now I can say our fellow nominees, oh. nice. our friends oh. of the show and past guests like David DelVal. Nice. Constantine Nasser, yes. Taylor White, yes. Frank Dietz and Frank Woodward, All right. Michael Mesmer, oh. yes. David J. Scow, and wow. John Kitley, and nice. John Stanley. Nice. Who's been oh, nominated for his oh, John new Stanley. book? That's yes, indeed. Fantastic. Wonderful book. Also, great, I just want a company to be with. Yes, yes. And I also want to point out David Weiner's It Came From blog yes has also been nominated Very too right. yeah oh so Solid. hey congratulations, congratulations david. david weiner yeah indeed and congratulations to my friend and mentor dana gould aka dr z and let's remind our listeners that you can still get monster party merch on our ebay store which is called Monster Party Store, easy to remember. <laughs> yes. Uh, the classic Monster Party logo that glows in the dark on a T-shirt is still available in at least one size, which would be large. In glorious large. <laughs> 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 until we until we get more inventory, which we promise we are working on. Uh, yes, then, we have a uh, we have a size failure. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the. Uh, Monster Party cloth PPE face mask is still available. So you, you'll definitely want to get that because it will be a collector's item. <laughs> yeah. Right. Use it while you can. <laughs> <laughs> and if you happen to be a Patreon member, we will also throw in free surprise goodies Ooh. courtesy of Jason Lindsay and Biff Bang Pow Toys and creature creator extraordinaire Ted Haynes. Oh, Ted. oh. Two if you're a Patreon people. member. Yes. So the Patreon, what's this all about, Matt? What's this Patreon thing? Well, funny you should ask, because <laughs> Patreon is this platform that if you sign up for it, you will get access to bonus material from Monster Party. Now, this Ooh. material could come in the form of episodes, audio episodes, uh, various Monster Party shows that we have produced, including uh, Larry's Toy Time. Mm -hmm. And Monster Party Masterpieces, where we show oh, yeah. uh, films that we've done. And it's a it's a good time. It really is. And mm -hmm. we've also got these wonderful travel logs that James has put together of our trip to Japan. Yes. And that is so great because it's it's raw footage. We did this nicely produced video that's uh, married to our Japan podcast that we did. Right, And so what this is, this is the raw footage. So you get to see us just sitting around and, you know, at various places and restaurants and toy stores, just shooting the shit, saying ridiculous yeah. things. I'm telling you, there's a lot of really entertaining moments in yes. that stuff. I mean, I, I watch it. I've said this a number of times, but I mean, it just takes me back. And it's like, it's almost like I wish I could step into the frame and yeah. <laughs> relive these wonderful times. 
it's like this you epic know, nerd crusade. When I'm time. when I'm honestly when I'm going through all that raw footage, putting it together, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy because it's like I'm I'm virtually back there, uh, living in yeah. minute by yeah. minute, and yeah. it's so much fun to do. Um, yes. So it's got to be fun to watch. And you do a so. great job. They really are wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, I I got to tell you, it's it's it sounds wonderful, like an embarrassment of riches, but it also sounds I got to tell you, like a bit of a luxury that few can afford. Matt, how well, expensive is this thing? Well, you're right. Uh, Few can afford it. Uh, The few, meaning anyone who doesn't have $5. $5? Five dollars. You can't can't buy a discount interocitor for that price. No, you can't. (laughs) You know, you can't. You can't buy a bag of future marshmallows. Right. (laughs) It ain't going to happen. That's nothing. But, But for $5, you can get access to all the things I just mentioned And not only will you be experiencing this wonderful material, but you'll also be helping us. You'll be a part of the Monster Party family. And for that, we would be forever grateful. Yeah. Right. Well, how how does one join this Patreon? Well, all you got to do is you go to patreon.com, go to Monster Party, click the join button, follow the instructions, and baby, there's going to be no future failing there. Well, that sounds awesome, Matt. And let's remind our listeners that you can also find us on social media, on Facebook, at Monster Party TV. YouTube is also Monster Party TV. Our Twitter handle, at Monster Party HQ. Instagram is also Monster Party HQ. And hey, we would love to hear your thoughts. So please take a moment and write us a review, and we will read it on the air. Unless we're in the Orgasmatron. Then all bets are off. (laughs) That's my time. On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong! And do your best to avoid those future fails. Right, E.T.? Ouch. Yeah, there you go. Hey, oh, I don't think she has her so, audio yet. Oh, oh, so you have to do it again. But this time we'll get oh, it right. What? She, she, she's she's got a she's got a no et behind her. <laughs> she, wait a minute. How could she do that? How could she there, do? How cool easily. could she be? <laughs> Only hey, one Sue? of the sweetest. Do we have you? Sue, can you hear us? <laughs> yes. Yay! Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love the ET thing. That's great. That should be. I can't believe you. Card. I can't believe you would do that, Sue. Come I on, can. I and, no, and I know you and I, I love her. You're like, you know, Sue's all, oh, I don't like ET. But I mean, I didn't know you have to like, you despise him so much. I, he you can't have to exist. Put up. Hey, I can't help you. It's just in my office. I, I <laughs> just happened to be there. <laughs> it's always there. Would so ET like, be considered like she... a future fail? <laughs> No, no, it's not a future. Oh, no, However, don't no, even no, no. Yes. wait, wait, yes. wait, no, 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 wait a minute. Now, if we're talking now, we should save it for, you know, but, but it's like, oh, if we're talking, you about, always say save it. You no, know. no, no. If we're, if we're talking about this stuff on the ship or something like that, who, you know, maybe that's a future fail. There's something in there. I mean, and uh, uh, well, you're already starting Larry. Larry, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, it's great to see you. It's great is to see you. Is that a is that a Telosian there? Telosian yeah. there? Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's a Telosian. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, it's bigger than you thought, right? It is. Is that is that an yeah. applause one? Wait, yeah, is it a, is it applause? Hello. Is it? Is <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> no, you you know there are different toy manufacturers. Aww. There's all. You know she's what? Got, she's got the arms outreached. Like, For listener, yes, like like, like hello. I'm, hello. I'm, I'm I, don't know who, I don't know what manufacturer this is. Okay. But I've don't had, you? Th- I've had the Telosian for I have for a long time. My favorite. Well, speaking of Telosian, since wait, hold on. Let's just showcase this a little bit.
<laughs> oh, the, no, the ET with no. the circle through it. I want that as a T-shirt. So isn't it kind of sad? <laughs> you feel sad for the Telosians because, you know, they, they okay, it's like, I'm, I'm only controlling your mind so I can see what's in your mind. It's like, there's no hugging or touching or feeling. Or let's say if you want to try to get aroused to go, allow me to feel the back of your head. Oh, feels like a bottom. Wow, I don't no. think you understand how the Telosians work. Yeah, it's, it's all it's, fantasy. It's so they have developed such oh! a highly sense of a world that if like it, if they're screwing something, it feels like you're screwing something. Right. But, but you see, yes, but but they're not, Sue. They're not. So I what know, happens? What's you the know, difference it, if your brain thinks it, it is? It's like, yeah, and, right. And we're, so so aren't there? If you cream man- your genes. No, it doesn't no. matter. OK, see, now you bring up a very good thing. So, Sue, because you're so wise in the ways of Star Trek science. Do you think that were there male and female Telosians or did they just kind of blend into one kind of, you know, ent- thing? That- I got to tell you, I haven't just- really worked it through. <laughs> uh, you know, That's fair. That's fair. What? Uh, I, like I know you've been. Prepar- I, I know you've great. been preparing I think there a are TED talk. Male and females, probably, but yeah. I, you know, I think that the construct of male female is a very human thing. Who knows what that is? Because oh, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yeah, could be like might have their own deal. You know. Yeah, they could be like seahorses. Although we know that they were actually played by women. No, not all of them. Not sir. all of them, but not all of them. Of them. So them correct your statement. Okay. Feel, feel, uh, as a matter of fact, was it? Feel, how many? How are we many were there? Someone, what's happening? When does this officially start? <laughs> oh, all right. Oh. Well, well, here's Ooh. the deal. Ooh, here's boy, the deal. Boy, Sean, she's, she's rough. Sean is going to be joining us. He has a a work thing. His hours are a little wonky sometimes, so he's yeah, going to he, join he, us. Uh huh. Is he driving for Amazon? He's a. In the biz. (laughs) (laughs) Virtually. uh, He created that fantasy (laughs) with the help of the (laughs) Telosian. Oh my gosh. That is, oh yeah, he's, uh, yes. So, yeah, we can start this. Yeah. No, no, I just didn't know if we were waiting or if we were actually starting because otherwise we're having a very interesting conversation about the Telosians. And, you know, how yes. they reproduce. And I just didn't know if we were officially it's, on. Well, this is, uh, of course, you know, we use this for our extras. Yes. Plus it's okay with you. Oh, can I, can oh, I, yeah, sh- okay. can I share something? Can I share something with Sue? Can I share something with Sue? Yeah, May I? I guess, I? I guess right. so. Okay. Please. So, so here's the thing. Let's say you're a toy executive and you go, well, you know, the creature from the black goons, a happening figure. So what do you happening. say? We, yeah, yeah. So, you know, for the monster kids out there. And let's make a creature figure, okay? So you go through the design process and stuff and to make the creature figure, figure out what color plastic. But then you say, hey, wait a minute. Yes, we're making it in color. But what we could do is, you know, those kids who went out and bought the color one, what do you say we make a black and white version? Because the film was in black and white. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. Hey, dun, he's, dun, dun, dun. Larry is holding up a black and white Mevo creature. Yes. Creature figure. It's very nice. Wow. That yes. is cool. Yes. That yes. is very cool. I have the uh, the sideshow one of that. Oh, you don't have the Mego one? Well, I don't have it yet. But the sideshow <laughs> one is worth more. You're the one that's all about what things are worth. Well, no, not all thing. No, I'm not all about worth. I'm going to bring you know? Sean in here. He'll clear this up. No, 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 don't bring Sean in. Don't uh, bring Sean in. Here he comes. I mean, hey, go, Sean. Oh, oh, Sean. How'd the deliveries go today? Hey, how's it going? What's uh, going on? Sue, Sue uh, suspects that you might be an Amazon driver. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? The only why? reason why, Sean, the only reason why they said our schedule is just you never know. And I just, think, yeah. <laughs> I think these poor people, and I, and I mean, poor in like a difficult job, they're just, they're delivering 24 hours a day every single day of the week. I oh, just, I know. Yeah. Every day well, I, I a guy, it's like 9 30 and he drops. Oh, yeah. You're right. Work. Sunday, Sundays they deliver. No. Yeah. It seems, and I, it seems I just like want that. To apologize to him. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I just. Uh, no, it's, had to it's, get my Telosian. You know what? They should, exactly. they should, they should design like a still suit from Dune for Amazon drivers, <laughs> so they can pee and eat 
from their own right, right, and, and, and sustain fluids. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you it was know, actually, it's so funny. I think they do that <laughs> <laughs> unofficially. <laughs> Yeah, That's a future that fail. Story doesn't that whole story is that they don't have enough time to to yeah. pee and yeah and pee in a no bag time. and throw it out the window or whatever. Yeah. Wait, wait, no, no, on Dune, no, they have plenty no, no, of time. No, no, they drivers. just want to keep in their Amazon. their Amazon their drivers bodily flu oh, fluids. Oh, yeah. In yeah. reality TV, it just it just brings out the best in people. It really yeah. does. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. is. Yeah, uh-huh. it's, it's a yeah. positive. It shows you know, what. Affirmation. What human spirit can bring to the world. Yes. Yep. <laughs> totally. Oh, uh, yeah. Nothing makes me feel better than watching a few hours of reality television. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I do like I do like a good cooking show. No, I've never worked oh, in a cooking uh, show yet. So what's wrong um, with cooking, Sean? Why do you hate cooking? Because I, I still, don't cook. <laughs> <laughs> I used to enjoy why. Top Chef. That was fun. I like. Oh, yeah, Top I mean, I know Chef. they're hugely popular. My wife Gina loves a lot of different ones, but uh, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, like as far as working on one, I don't think it would be that enjoyable. It's not like very story driven, you know. It's not. It's more well, a process, I don't know. process you gotta, show. I you don't know. know if you know if if your souffle falls three yeah. minutes before the deadline. True. That's like, drama. Like, can true. you can you imagine though a Klingon top chef? chef. Oh, here we are. That's our already Klingon that, top that's chef. A Hell's Kitchen that already exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, he yeah, wishes, would it be he, cool he, if he they, wishes. Yeah. Would it be yeah. cool if they go? You need to you need to take this these live quinquops. You know the, that have all these tentacles and they have sharp fangs and stuff. And they the little creatures come out and you have to like chop them up and make special little. Souffle. I, I, would, I think it, it might be. Oh, your sprinkled cupcakes bring you honor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so you guys have probably already addressed this, but I, uh, Sue, I love the uh, the ET picture you have yes, right in your desk. About. Why? How come you're so freaking cruel of a sudden? Do you? Do, do, let, let's, let's, let's 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 we've done we've we've gone over this a lot. No, let's, let's no, we on. don't. Let's no, we have How do we get to the I, show? Listen, you guys. Matt asked me at the last minute. I'm just in my office. The last minute. Whatever's here is here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, this is. So I you're telling me you I'm like, didn't I go forgot, out of it. I forgot. I'm like, oh shit! I better turn on my Zoom. <laughs> I forgot. To get rid of it. Right. <laughs> it's it's your wallpaper on your computer too, isn't it? Yeah. That, oh, that oh, yes. image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you have tiles of that in your shower? <laughs> yeah, and I, I did the big, huge Ben Affleck, huge back tattoo of the whole all thing. Right. <laughs> all right. All circle right. around it and then strike through it. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's hot. This is well. This is this is great. This All right, great. Let's let's we'll let's save this for it. our let's shit on ET episode. Okay? Yeah, I think it's going to be this <laughs> one. No, no. <laughs> it is every time Sue's on it because yeah. that, so. hey. yeah. it is. It's one of my favorite things since I couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> great. Oh, how could you not care? Oh, <laughs> there's so many reasons. Yeah. Okay, so let's start it. You don't like joy or happiness, and you know what, whatever. Okay. Let's get so this to is, uh, <laughs> yes. this is fe- future fails is the official future title, right? fails. How That's do you like future that? Fails. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Got a ring. Right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And can I ask another question about future fails? Yeah. So this is kind of a, like a swinging kind of, you know, kind of free for all kind of thing, right? We're yes. Not, yes. We're not yes. kind of like swinging. you go, you know, no, no, no. no let's just talk. No. Let's just yeah. talk. Yeah. We'll mostly just be rap. interrupting you, Larry. So we'll just get ready. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what there's gonna be new? some future <laughs> fails on your mic. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's start. All Here right, hey, hey, right. really quickly, really quickly, right. I got us a, one listener today. I got us a new listener, just to let you know. Cool. I was right. very excited about that. Uh, someone came into the office and they saw my little monster party flight. I go, hey, what's this? And I said, well, and I go into this whole explanation, and she just thought that was amazing, and she was has. She, uh, was she an Amazon driver? <laughs> see no. what you've started oh, Sue. but she does spend a lot of time in the car cool yeah i yeah. don't i she, don't need yeah, to know she, anymore she does spend a lot of time in the car <laughs> okay oh, that's, that's great called, that's good I, Matt, this, this is, is all good called, banter it's yeah. just called taking away taking a throwaway mark uh, you know remark <laughs> and just beating it into the ground for no <laughs> yeah that's yeah. what i like yeah <laughs> that's what comedy is right. based on <laughs> that's right <laughs> 
You've seen my act. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I here we go. Seen that act though. <laughs> oh, it's coming. Here we go. You know, the thing is with Matt's act, there's so many parts of it he can't do anymore. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, there's true. no way. In the, the world we live in, I don't think yeah. so. Oh. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. just leave oh. it there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Uh, I just took, I cut out the middleman and just canceled myself. <laughs> <laughs> so just really quick you're saying that some of your humor that you did years ago it's not really hip today no no it's hip it's hip. <laughs> it's too hip it's too it's hip little, for the room it's a uh, dare i say inappropriate <laughs> to oh. the uh recent uh atmosphere of <laughs> yeah. taste in, it doesn't comedy. mean it's not funny matt it's, right exactly oh, in, fact, yeah. in my opinion it's funnier <laughs> because right, of yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know what? It's like it's like fashion. Eventually, it'll come yeah, back. It'll come back around. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, I'm like flares. Yeah. Or <laughs> Dave Chappelle will do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's still a show I really think that you need to see, and I know you didn't watch the series, but um, Deep Space Nine was like the last know. gasp of models. And mm-hmm. like giant space battles where it's like every possible Federation and Klingon ship and models. It's right. just it's breathtaking and Klingon centric, which well, I know that's you enjoy. Like, it's, I, I still, I just don't know why they don't, if they're going to do a Star Trek movie, why is it not a war with the fucking Klingons? You know, mm. it's like, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, I mean, I guess a full yeah. out war, they never really... They don't. Yeah, they have, you're right. They have a thing with the the council or Deep Space Nine. There's a war. This, yeah. Or you just have Ursula and, Ursula and her like that, and they get killed off at the beginning. But they're not. You're not with Klingons yeah. for a good, you know, half the movie because and people are so compelled by Klingons. When you go to the conventions, yeah. half the people are dressed as Klingons. Not a lot of people dress as Romulans. Yeah, yeah. The Kling, Kling, Klingons good, are good like point. Klingons are the Daleks for Star Trek. I mean, they're like yeah. they're they're, they're icon, yeah. the iconic villain. The you know, for the for the franchise. Yeah, yeah and, and just I mean, when I mean, I'm talking about two movies ago. We're just like going, well, where the where the f are the Klingons? Why do we keep going away from what is so fantastic? Sue, yeah. I, Sue, I had an idea for a show that would be about you know, Star Trek is always about the Federation ship that's out there to seek you know new worlds right. and everything my idea was to do the klingon version of that yeah so you've got a klingon go and- kirk and then you've got a science officer and then i i thought maybe it could be fun to like as the science officer when data was so popular his brother lore the evil one you put him on the klingon ship oh yeah <clears throat> i thought that would have been a, a good to see it from like you know there's always a different like point. Yeah, a view. different <clears throat> viewpoint, and then have like on the ship that always be the war between the science Klingons and the militaristic sure. ones, and yeah, could have been fun. I think, I, th- I think in some some of the movies though, they they they've cheapened them. Like Star Trek Five, you know, with the female Klingons, they try something a little different, but it was just kind of silly and like just that's the thing. I think they, yeah, like yeah, but it, also they just they they fucked off after the beginning of the movie until you see you know what right, I mean? that's they were true. hardly in it. It right, was, right. Okay, now we got those two characters. I, I, I like, gotta oh. tell you, and I gotta tell you, I mean, wherever you think about Star Trek, the motion picture, when that the opening of that movie with that music, yeah, uh, that's for, cool. for the Klingon theme, and yeah. you saw Mark Leonard in that new looking Klingon, I was like, holy shit, yeah, yeah, this is fucking it. awesome. And, <laughs> and I wanted, are, I wanted to see that movie of that those guys. Yeah, they get killed yeah. in the first five minutes, but that 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 dun 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 all right, great. Yeah, I mean, no, that that works, and I, I yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you're right. They could, they could nowadays. Yeah, there should be like a Netflix Klingon Star Trek series. Well, you could do well, just maybe go back to the original makeup, which is just basically someone who looks grease so paint Hispanic. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was all it was was thick eyebrows, sort of, yeah. and, and, a, and a mustache. It was kind yeah. of sort it's of like this. 
It was a mixture of like Hispanic or like Fu Manchu almost. Or like you know? pirate uh, or something. Uh, yeah. Asian. It, it was foreign. For, foreign, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I right. don't know where right. you're from, but I don't like it. Yeah. It's the way you say the word vegetable. Remember that one? <laughs> the what's it? The the doves that uh, it's the because day of the, the, cap, dove? the day of the dove, yeah. Oh, day of the dove, yeah, right. The, 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 because the Klingon guy goes, "You a mindless of vegetable," and I always thought, "Ooh, he's so foreign to Klingon because he says the word vegetable so differently than we do." <laughs> anyway, uh, one of the best Klingon lines is Worf. He's in a hot tub, and uh, which is great because I, you can just tell that the makeup stopped right here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. brown makeup right. floating. Yes. You know. he's yeah. sitting in the hot tub. Everyone sits in the hot tub like here. Yeah, right, right. The hot tub. Like, <laughs> Wait, right. is it a hot tub or a mud bath? I don't know what it is. I don't, I think, I don't I don't know. Maybe it was a mud bath. And, and what I is his line? His line. His line is, we just sit here. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, I believe and it's I a mud bath. I had that moment of, yeah, you know, why the F are you in there? But anyway, it, the, the only thing that makes it funny is because it's like his head. Yes. Right. Yeah. I always yeah. liked it when his brother would show up. And, you know, he's so just disdainful about anything Federation and they try to make a meal for him and they you know, <laughs> right. spare no expense and they create this big lavish buffet of whatever. And he goes, what is this? Oh, it's a turkey. We cook, you know, cooked bird. You cook it, huh? Mm, all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Well, that's like, the thing is that if you did like what you were saying, a series like you were saying, Matt, is that you actually have all the qualities of that are can bring humor to something so it's not but you're still yes. in the Klingon yeah. universe right exactly right right <clears throat> well the same way the same way that they had Worf on Next Generation couldn't you also have one of the crew members on the Klingon ship be one of not necessarily a human character but maybe one of the other aliens like the guy with the white and black half face or somebody oh, we're we're way back. Back. The guy no, no not not that face. one because oh, yeah, like, other... their entire race is gone by the way yeah, okay. they, if you yeah, watch yeah. the exactly. episode, Jim, it was their it was their last the battlefield, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there was an episode in season two. <laughs> there was an episode in season two where Riker goes on board. It's like an exchange that's, program. That's a he, great episode. It's a great oh, yeah. episode. That's a great and he goes episode. on board the Klingon ship. That's and right. That's one of the best an exchange. episodes. It's, yeah. it's an exchange. And and it's he a... like everyone thinks he's soft because he's human and oh, Federation. Right, right. And they right. Ha- a, and that's when they introduce Gach, which is the yeah. live worm thing, you know. Yeah, right, right. And mm-hmm. uh and they're all waiting for him to eat the Gach and he's eating it and they're all like, Yeah, okay. He he may be okay. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah, but boy, I love did that he stuff. Have the runs. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, they're still not... wiggling when they come out. That, that's a, that's a future <laughs> fail right there, man. Oh, how about this? How about this? Can you put a grown-up Clint Howard on the Klingon ship as one of the crew members? Oh yeah, oh, he'd right. be a great Klingon. Oh, give me oh my God, he would be. He'd be great, he would be a great Andorian, Romulan, anything. He, 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 was, a, he, was, a he was a Ferengi. He's a Ferengi. That's Ferengi. right. Right. Okay. <clears throat> right. He was yeah. a Ferengi, but when, what was it when he was the uh, uh, Tranya? I hope you know. Tranya. Of whatever. course. What, what was the name of his person there? Belak. Belak. I know Belak. What was he? Oh, what? Oh, what, I don't, what species what was, was he? The, yeah. We'd yeah, have to. Good we'd have question. To, I don't, I don't know if go it was to ever the, uh, explored. I mean, I'm sure the, Star yeah, Trek Concordance, sir. Yeah, the, those the, the Star Trek Wiki will explain. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, this is in the podcast when we start taking calls. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, 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 thank you so much for being with us tonight. Yeah. Night, thank you. Guys. Good night, night, Sue. 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 Thank you. Great to see you. See you later, Sue. Sue. I don't know how to leave. Oh, there are technology. <laughs> Do it quickly. Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> She's turned off her interocitor. All right. <laughs>